Testing, 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 one, two, three. All right, everyone, welcome back to another Friday night live stream here at Christ Centered Ironworks. We've got Jessica obviously here on the computer, Hello. my lovely woman. Yes. She's going to be evening. doing the clicky fingers McGee over there. And we also have a special guest of Thomas. You know him, you love him, mm. the hand model, and uh, general, generally just a good all around swell guy. He's going to be doing some striking for me this evening. So in this stream this evening, we are going to not only be doing a giveaway live stream where we'll be giving away a one treadle hammer kit, as this is the year of the treadle hammer uh, that we are affectionately calling it this year. Not only will we be giving away another treadle hammer kit that we sell over our website, blacksmithingblanks.com. Dot com. Dot com. So not only will we be doing that, but Thomas made up some really great S-hooks, like two different bundle packs of S-hooks. We're going to be giving away a starter pack of some acanthus leaves and also some vice-mounted tong and hammer racks as well. So a lot of really cool stuff, along with Possum Sausage has decided to contribute again with a flat bit pair of tongs this uh, month. So we're going to be able to take and give one of those away as well. So I'm super excited to get started. Um, I've had some recent dental work done. Uh, had to have quite a bit of dental work and like emergency stuff done. So I am high as a kite right now. <laughs> so I'll we'll have to see how the, uh, uh, we'll have to see how this stream plays out. That's why uh, Thomas is going to be the designated hammer swinger <laughs> for this evening. That way we don't hurt old Olga here. So ain't that right, Thomas? Yep, we don't want to hurt this beauty. Yep, so. I think it was the uh, NyQuil cherry pie, you know? Yeah, the yeah, one, the, the NyQuil cherry stream. pie thing, yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, I'm, I'm, I'm up on some good ones this evening. So we'll see how, we'll see how that goes. Uh, if my mouth gets too sore to talk, I'll stop. I'll just hand it over to Thomas. He's got enough to say for the both of us. Oh, yeah, you? thanks. Well, Lord knows that I, you know, talk a lot. A bunch. <laughs> it's hard to get them to shut up and get work done in the shop. Ain't that right? It is hard sometimes. He doesn't have to agree, but see, it's always fun when you lead somebody with a question like, ain't that right? You're like, yeah, yeah, that's right. <laughs> you don't give them a chance to answer. You just make them agree unwillingly. So, all right, you want to go to camera number two, Jess, real quick? Sure. I'm going to share the project tonight. Mm -hmm. So, uh, I made the mistake of saying, hey, let's uh, do a little decorative anvil at 250,000 subscribers for a giveaway. Uh, we'll do, make one in a live and then give, give it away. So I'm going to turn this railroad bolt here, and we're going to turn this into a small anvil. Uh, it'll be semi-decorative, but we're going to make this up for the 250,000 uh, subscriber giveaway. We have something much larger planned for 500,000 subscribers once we pass the 500k uh, threshold here on the channel, and uh, it's going to be a little bit bigger of an anvil and a little bit, a little bit more fun to make than this. And hopefully, I will be back up to full snuff and uh, feeling good. So we're going to take this railroad bolt. Um, these are these are like a 1080. Um, so, some people. You know, they're more, they're close to like a 1080 steel. They are a higher carbon material. Uh, they are not mild steel. These railroad bolts aren't. Uh, they spark test really nice. And they do make really nice little, uh, you know, steak anvils if you need little like mushroom steaks or if you need to make different kind of tooling that would go in your hardy hole. Uh, these are a wonderful, wonderful thing to pick up if you can find them at the scrap uh, to do so. But uh, the one nice thing is, is if, you have the threads, and if they're in good shape, you can thread the nut. If you can get the nut, you can thread the nut up on there and then forge the shank down uh, to where this can be driven into a stump and makes a nice little, a sweet little stump anvil for on the go. But anyways, so we're going to go ahead and get started. We're going to get this heated up. I'll let you do that, Thomas. We're going to get it heated up, and then we'll do some striking. All right. Who's all here, Jess? That was a mouthful of things to say, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, uh, Keith Tenzing, Robert Lawness. Hello, um, hello, guys. Michael Wright, Coach Tenex. Joe Wolf says hello there, Roy and Thomas. Hello, hello. Howdy, howdy. <laughs> uh, Dave V, George Anderson, Rodney Seabolt, Jester C. Hello, hello. Just to name a few. Good to have you all. Good to have you all. Uh, Debacca Maker says Roy can't stop, won't stop. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Trying not to stop, anyhow, that's the big key, trying not to stop. So, 
Corey Shire says, what's that? Roy, get tired of talking? Never. Ha, ha, ha. Yeah. It might get too painful to talk. We'll have to see how that goes. So I do want to take and make sure that I extend the invite that we will be having a show after the show, the live stream. So we will have the members live tonight. That'll be from 9 p.m. to be determined. So, um, but we plan on having a members live. If you don't know what that is, that's an extra special live we do for the channel members here on Christ Center Ironworks, where we will be doing a live stream where it's just a sit down, hang out and chat with us in our living room. So uh, it's a great place to ask a ton of questions um, that's, our, that's not necessarily able to get to in these bigger live shows uh, that we're doing here. So uh, yeah, Black Collar Army, <laughs> here's your call out to take and be part of that live if, if you're still part of there. So yeah, Black Collar Ironworks, he donated a lot of memberships last time. Um, and the way Jessica does that, she actually posts the, the link for that mm -hmm. private live stream yep. uh, to the members uh, community tab yep. uh, on here on YouTube. Jessica, I, I was asked by a channel member at a recent conference that he was gifted a channel membership and doesn't know how to renew or, or you know, refresh and up, you know, continue the channel membership. Mm -hmm. And so Jessica is gonna end up making a video on that uh, to take and help people out with that. Like, you know, it'll be like a screen recording. This is how you do X, Y, Z to re-sign up uh, to be a member uh, if you wanna do that. But the membership, uh, button is pretty easy to find. It's the join logo or icon if you're on, um, I believe, iOS or if you're on Android on your phone. It should be right under our channel name, shouldn't it, honey? Yep, that's uh, Right on this video, it'll, sit, mm -hmm. it'll have a little blue join icon. You just click on the join and then it'll walk you through the steps of how to be, become a channel member and tiers and benefits and all that good stuff. <coughs> Coach 10X says, where can I get a shirt like that? Well, you got to know a guy like this <laughs> to get a shirt like this. So um, we do have some shirts over on Teespring, but that one's not on Teespring. Yep. Nope. This was custom made by Thomas for me because he's an amusing little fella. Yeah, I keep that heat and it's going to be a wet. Cat Van Forge says Roy and Jess are the best. Well, thank you, Cat Van Forge. Greatly appreciate it. So uh, can I have the mic for a second? Go ahead. Um, so I would like to give a shout out to Jeff Killian. Um, I opened up my mailbox the other day and in there was a bottle opener for me. And I just want to say a big thank you, Jeff. You didn't have to, but it really warms my heart. And if you guys want to do that, um, send me a bottle opener. I'll turn something, you know, make something in return. Um, if you guys want to do that, you can hit me up on my Instagram uh, or Facebook. It's Thomas Goodymoot across all platforms. Watch it. Um, I do have that link down in the description to your Instagram. Yep. Just wanted to give a, a shout out to him. Greatly appreciate that. Yep. Um, Troy over at Bar Run Forge, he did that as well. So he, he made a bottle opener and a video of it. So give him a look and watch. So just want to say thank you guys, and if you guys make me something, I'll make you guys something in return with my mark on it. Jeff Killian says you're very welcome, yep. Thomas. All right, less yak yak, more whack whack. And Jester C, welcome to the Bellows Boy. Hey, thank you. All right, ready to go to camera number two, Jess? Yep. All right. We're just squaring this up. Nope, we're not going to square. We're just going to drive straight down. Let me find my flats here. First step, we're going to flatten this straight down. Hit it hard. Well, give him a tail. 
Well, let me drive out that face. Well, you see that right there? The fish looking, yep. They had some sort of cold shut going on there. We need to grind that off. All right. So, if you want to... Um, Grab the battery operator. Yeah, that'll be good. So, what we've got here, uh, I can't really show it off on camera. So, whenever they actually made this, they must have had some sort of hot shut in here. And when they form the head, it skivved that hot shut over, so it made a lap over. So there's a big hollow pocket right here on the very end of this piece, and we've got to get rid of that before we go further, so this way it doesn't turn into a crack later on. Mm -hmm. Tyler Dixon says, I missed what kind of bolt that is. So this is a railroad boat, bolt. Um, anvils, little miniature anvils. You want to take it in the other room and do that? Go, buddy. Um, so miniature anvils are really fun to make out of bolts. Uh, if you can get like grade eight bolts, um, or you know at least grade five or better bolts, they make really nice. You can make really nice little steak anvils, mushroom steaks, things like that. And the nice thing about it is that you have a head already. You've got an upsetted mass that's very easily to translate out into uh, horns or you know, forge it out one direction if you're needing something like a scroll starter or things like that. Uh, it's a nice starting point, so to speak, like that. But yeah, it's, it's a railroad bolt is what it is. And that thing's like super old. So as old as Methuselah, maybe. Mm -hmm. It's old. But railroad bolts are made of high carbon material. They're about a 1080 to 1084 in my experience. Um, so I don't know what new ones are made out of, but you shouldn't have new ones in your shop anyhow. <laughs> Athol Ironworks, thank you for gifting five memberships. They were gifted to Eli Bar Run Forge, Fly and An Anvil and Fly Forge, Dyer Wolf Forge, Benny Hill, and Mitchell Edwards. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for gifting like that. And also the broke blacksmith joined us as a bellows boy. Broke blacksmith, I'm glad you're not that broke. <laughs> well, you might be broke now after the Bellows Boy, but thank you. We appreciate it. Your patronage. Patronage. Sports Gob and Milky Toast says, what are you making today? So we are making a decorative little anvil, uh, steak anvil, if you will, to give away. So, yep. Now, I will have to get it all finished up. We probably won't have it finished in tonight's live stream. So we will give it away in the next live stream. Uh, as a giveaway item. And Georgia Woodsman also joined us, the Bellows Boy. Hey, thank you so much. Seth Piper says, I'm here, but I'll be in and out. Good to have you, Seth. Jester C says, it'd be cool if we could see a temperature overlay. I could do it with an Arduino rig. Oh, do like a, oh, do an overlay on the screen. Like a, yeah, that would be kind of neat. Yeah, to be able to see a different uh, temperature thing. That would be cool. The broke blacksmith says I need to upgrade from my piece of railroad track anvil. Well, good news is there's a lot of really great, let me take a look at that, Thomas, real quick. There, good news is there's a lot of economical options now, anvil options out there. That upgrading shouldn't be too, shouldn't be too terribly bad to go from, uh, um, you know, to go from a railroad track anvil. So, to upgrade up. So that's, that's nice. I recently did a video. I'm sure almost everybody on the internet that's a blacksmith has seen the video now of doing uh, the destruction testing on the Doyle, the new Doyle anvil that Harbor Freight offers, and then also doing the, um, uh, doing the unboxing, initial impressions and review video of that. And I'm pretty impressed with it for what it is. The most thing, the biggest thing that I'm impressed with is that there is now a big box store, like them or hate them, there is now a big box store where the common man can just go walk in and go get it, grab an anvil, grab a hammer, a leather apron, you know, some vice grips for temporary pairs of tongs and go get to smithing, right? 
And uh, so I think that that's a really cool development in the smithing world as where uh, it, you know, it used to not be like that. You, you had to really do some searching and hunting and hoping and praying to uh, be able to get, you know, the tools of your craft. So um, now there's still some really good companies uh, that are small mom and pop that, you know, I shouldn't call them mom and pop. That gives the wrong idea. They are locally grown. They are small. They are family run businesses of tool manufacturers here in the United States and purveyors of tools and importers of tools. And those businesses are still very worth supporting. But now there's this nice large spectrum that you can be able to take and purchase tools on where you're at specifically as a smith. Because you may not be into buying the most expensive anvil just yet, but you can go to the box store and, and, and get what you need. Now it's got to get hotter. Yeah, it needs to be yellow. Okay. Yellow hot. Oh. Yep, so I think that that's a really neat development in that. I have a ton more videos coming, um, not only on that, but a lot of different comparison videos. Uh, a few videos that are going to make me earn my shirt. <laughs> that'll be coming out there uh, here soon. S on that subject, this might be a nice time for a little small rant, uh, a, a little bit. Uh, now, most people that are a part of this live stream, they probably know, that they probably already understand what I get at on the channel. And so this is a bit redundant to most of you folks, but I'll put it out there for people in the future. Um, so, I get a lot of I get a lot of comments. I get there's a lot of like side commentary, hate commentary that comes in on videos like this, like the destruction testing of the Harbor Freight Anvil. And I've mentioned it many times in videos in the past, so it's a bit redundant. But the reason why I do the videos that I'm doing right now, even though some people are like, why would you lay into an Atlas Anvil like you did? There's a little Atlas Anvil sitting right here that I was shipped from Atlas Knife and Tool, and my main purpose in doing stuff like that, Thomas and I doing the destruction testing on these anvils, is it's like a proof test. Nobody ever proof tests these anvils to see what they can do at their furthest extremes, right? No one's doing that at the factory. The, you know, the, uh, the, the purveyors of these anvils, they're not doing it right. They're not doing destruction testing. Clearly, if anybody ever bought the blue Harbor Freight anvil from Harbor Freight, Clearly, they're not checking their anvils or doing any sort of destruction testing. So I've been doing that to take and proof out the commentary that normally gets regurgitated inerrant, errantly and arrogantly throughout all of the blacksmithing community. When someone says Harbor Freight's absolute junk, don't ever buy any tools from them, that's somebody who has a very dim-witted view of the world. They may have had one bad experience and they chalk up the whole company to that one bad experience. And that's, that's not right to do that. Um, just like any of the, like the Atlas Knife and Tool Anvil. I did a review on it. There's things I like, things I dislike. It's an honest review, it's a good comparison video. And it's something that if you're out there in the world and you're in the market for an anvil, now you can, do, uh, now you can take and look easily on your phone without spending your dime and you can look into the anvil. And that's why I do those things. So you have to take my channel as a whole, not just one video or one tenth of one video. You have to look at the full library of over 1800 videos to kind of get my point of what I'm at. It's not condensable in 30 seconds into a 30 second short. Go to the anvil. Anvil cam, Jess? Yes. Anvil cam, please. Okay. Good. Well, well, so what we're doing here is we are taking what was once a cube of material and we're trying to stretch that cube of material out laterally. So we're widening the head of this bolt significantly, if you can see. So we are flattening it in one plane. And while we're flattening it or taking all this mass and squinching it down this way, we are then spreading it in this direction as we go. 
Now, as we upset this bolt, we're going to keep doing that, and it's going to give us longer and longer protrusions that we can then pull our horns out of, or our tail stock, or whatever. Let's go ahead and give her that a straighten up there. Go for it. Right on that, yeah, right on that transition. Out on the edge. Lighter, just more consistent on the edge. Well, when we come back out, Thomas, well, we're going to aim for the high side yeah. more. So we're going to drive that high side down yeah, that's why I a bit it, more when we do that. Yep. yep, that should be fine. Yeah, so we're picking up the width of the, you know, the length, if you will, of the anvil that we need right now. If you're looking for a fun project to do with somebody, you say you got a buddy coming over and you, and you all want to, you know, make something cool together, go get a large bolt from the hardware store. Like I said, a grade 8 bolt was nice or grade 5 and higher and forge yourself out an anvil, a little mini anvil. It's a lot of fun. And it doesn't require a lot of specialized tooling. So. George Anderson says, I'm working on making my Doyle anvil stand, but it doesn't have mounting holes. Any suggestions? Mm -hmm. Okay, so my suggestions on that is always what it's been. Mount it like I mounted my Achayo anvil. Uh, I did a whole video um, on mounting, making a stand and mounting the Achayo anvil. And I would suggest that video series and mount it just like that. Uh, I am not a fan, and I will never be a fan, of mounting anvils through provided holes in their feet. You're asking for, a that's a stress riser waiting to happen, and you're asking to snap a foot off. I have seen boatloads of anvils where feet have been snapped off or something has been broken out because, say, somebody mounted an anvil and the base wasn't perfectly plumb with the bottom of the anvil, and now it's putting all this tension on one lug of the foot, and as you're wailing on it, you know, that feet, you know, those feet break off. So I'm not a fan of bolting through uh, mounting holes of anvils. I'd rather just secure the anvil from the outside in. And the Achayo anvils, again, the Achayo anvils, people say that those, you know, oh, they have a hole all the way through the base and that's for the mounting. I, I don't think so. In my personal opinion, I believe that's incorrect. Um, otherwise, they would have done them more intentionally I think it's more of a fact of the manufacturing than what it is actually uh, something that they were intending on being a mounting spot. I think it's just something that, otherwise, it would be the same on all of the anvils they offer, but it's not. So high side. Well, yeah, slow down. We've got to be more controlled forging there. That's good. Well, we're not trying to thin it. So go ahead and hit it right back here. Well, slow down. Okay, let me get this right here. Go ahead and give you a whack. So I've let this piece cool off just slightly. Just got to give me some big blows there. Straight right down here. center, yep. We get a bit right there. Yep. Whoa. All right. And we'll drive that down just a fuzz more, just to clean it up. Take that square back up. Good. Whoa. Whoa. Again. Whoa. Give me a back face hammer blow right there. Well, we'll have to drive that down a fuzz in the next heat. 
Nicole? Yes. Tim O'Connor, thank you for the $5 super chat. He says, shipping donation and hello, everyone. I don't want to get to sparkling. Well, that's why I stopped it. it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it keeps rolling, so back off just so slightly before that. What's that, babe? Uh, super Wait, chat we have a from... shipping, shipping dono? Yep, sure do. Awesome, thank you. That was Tim O'Connor? Yep. Thank you, Tim. Uh, Milky Toast says, do you think it's worth upgrading to the Doyle Anvil from the Vivor Anvil? If you already have the Vivor Anvil, um, unless you're in the market for another an additional anvil, I wouldn't say that it is a direct one-to-one -one upgrade. Now, if you're just getting in the market, I think the Doyle Anvil is a better anvil overall, fit and finish, than what the Vivor Anvil is. So, if you already got a Vivor Anvil, I wouldn't say, well, let's chuck the Vivor Anvil off to the side and go get the Doyle. Um, you could certainly do that. You could sell off your Vivor Anvil and then go get you a Doyle Anvil. Uh, but I wouldn't say that they're a one-to-one -one upgrade kind of thing. It's, it's not an upgrade where it's like you're missing out if you don't have the Doyle Anvil, right? So I wouldn't say you're missing out. And in fact, they're probably going to come down in price. Uh, just to be honest, they will probably run sales on them and other thing once the, the heat kind of dies down on them. And as long as I don't keep making videos about them, <laughs> the, 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 uh, the heat will die down on them a little bit. And then, you know, it, you might even be able to pick it up for even a better price than what it is currently. So I personally, if you already have a good anvil that you're using and a Chayo, um, a regular, uh, you know, a, a good old fashioned anvil, if you got one of those, great. I would not necessarily say that the Doyle anvil would be something that you need to go right out and buy and purchase, like you're going to miss out. So don't have that FOMO. Um, it's going to be around for a long time to come, I believe, especially when they see the sales on it. Be and so I, wonderful. I do know so right around Memorial Day, they always have a big sale on right around Memorial Day. Yeah. So yeah. So maybe so maybe hold out until you can see some deals on them. Um, if if you want to add a second anvil to your a repertoire. All right. Let me hit on the high side up here this morning. Try to hold that. Whoa, look at it. Good, one more with that. Oh, I know. Good. You get the anvil? Yes. You can see how much width we really got out of this. We got quite a bit. Thomas. Pop me a few right there. Well, let me get it. A little more. Well. Good. Starting to shape up really nicely. What do you think, hun? Yeah, yep, it nope. is. Getting that uh, material in the right place. Yeah, we keep pushing this down and then keep upsetting it. The original video we did on this, I believe, was one of the first 10 videos on the channel. Was it? Yeah, yep. Cool. <laughs> so, what we're going to do, what we're going to do with this, I'll talk about this real quick. What we're going to do with this piece here, Got this thing here. We are going to work this. I'm going to upset this just to fuzz more yet. So we're going to push this back into itself just a bit more yet. Okay. And then we're going to work on drawing out the horn some because we have a handy dandy little handle here. So before we push this into it and upset it to make it feet, we want to be able to take advantage of having a nice easy handhold, you know, a nice easy place to handle this. So we're going to work on getting the horns drawn out. We're going to pull the horn out on it. I'm probably just going to do a horn and then a flat, just a regular flat tail section on this one. Make it a single horn versus a double. But we're going to go ahead and pull out, pull out a horn on this one side where we've got the most amount of mass and meat. And then on this back side, that'll become the tail, the tail of the anvil. And then this portion in here, we are going to upset the mass of this material uh, quite a bit more into this. But we're going to wait to do that 
until we get those done because again, like I said, we have a handy handle out here. Once we start upsetting this, this thing's gonna be all sorts of weird to grab a hold of while we work on it in future successive heats. So just a little bit of planning in that way goes a really long way. Now, that being said, there is also some areas here where we're developing some hot shuts because of the ribbing, the way the ribs are on that bolt. And so I may actually have Thomas go over in the other room and grind those out before we go much further with actually developing those horns. And I think I will have you do that. So we need to grind, we need to grind that out to where we don't have that, that pooch of material there. Mm -hmm. And then the same thing here, right? But don't go up into here. I don't want to thin yeah. out the horn area anymore. Just blend it. Just right one. in here, get rid of that little pooch area yep. as well. Um, because we want to keep the mass in this to draw it out. Alrighty. Thank you, sir. Dave sent a $5 super chat and says, love the channel. I'm so glad you like the channel. Thank you, Dave. Thank you for the support there. So yeah, so I want to back, I want to backtrack a little bit while, while uh, Thomas is doing that. Um, and, and again, circle back to my, my content strategy and how the content plays out on the channel for those of you who don't know. So I produce a lot of content and I do mean a lot, a ton of content. In fact, I am the most, I would say, without bragging, I am the most prolific content creator on the platform of YouTube. I have well over 1,800 videos strong, and it's probably way, probably getting closer to 2,000 videos at this point of content for you to watch around the subject of blacksmithing. Some of it's around business, some of it's around reviews, some, around, some of it's around tooling, some of it's around my artistry work that I do, some of it's around beginner techniques and everything you can think of in between. I have produced over the almost eight years that we have been doing this on the platform. And because of that, my content in order to not get stale or stagnant, I'm constantly trying to think of ways of engaging with you, the audience, in new ways and in new and informative ways and you know, be able to present good information that's relevant to the current audience that's watching the channel. A lot of you are just getting started. A lot of you are asking questions. What anvil should I buy? What tong should I buy? What forge is best? Those sort of things. So a lot of my content has shifted in recent years to doing more tooling centric reviews in comparison testing and you know, checking things out for you as a beginner so you can then therefore spend your money more wisely um, and you know, actually have something out there that you engage where you wanna put your hard earned dollars, right? Getting into the craft. Will that be that way forever? Probably not, probably not. It's gonna be that way until there's no more interest in that and I've, I have served that portion of the community of blacksmiths well enough. And then I will go along and I'll probably rehash the fundamental series at some point in time. Um, I did an entire, <laughs> I've got playlist upon playlist on forging fundamentals to help you guys out there as beginning smiths. Um, I have intermediate and very advanced techniques. I have video tutorials I plan on doing on making acanthus leaves um, because that's something I'm into is French Baroque ironwork. I have plans on all sorts of good stuff out there. So when you click into one of my videos and you think, hey, this guy's whacking on an anvil. He's a complete moron. That's on you. You're not taking my channel as a whole and what I've done for eight years and what I'll continue to do for the next eight years uh, on the platform, which is educate. So the anvil videos, the destruction testing videos, those sort of things, they're going to be a part of the channel going forward because I'm putting the companies to the task. I'm putting their money, I'm putting my money where their mouth is at, right? And so, is it any good? Somebody in the forums might say, no, that anvil's trash. Well, do you have that anvil? Well, no. Oh, I guess they're not a credible source. I seek to be a credible source of information in the blacksmithing community and that has been my, my drive since day one is to constantly educate. And so that's what I will be doing long and into the future. If I felt like I needed to get that off my chest. We have a lot of new subscribers to the channel. Um, 
It's not just wild and zany videos. As you know, that's that's not what it's always going to be about. But that's what it's about right now. You know, I make ripples and then I laugh because it's controversial. I'm laughing all the way to the money bank. The more people are angry and throwing throwing feces at each other, I'm just giggling in the background. To be honest with you, I really am. <laughs> Because the algorithm just loves it. <laughs> the algorithm loves it. So, mm -hmm. so now you know a little bit about Roy's personality. Oh. Tim O'Connor says, so many cool. videos. So many. Yeah, so many. Some of my OGs that have been in here for a long time. A lot of the old guard, man. Been watching me since day one. They can tell you. My videos have definitely changed over the years. So. Some for the better, some not for the better, but hey, it's a work in progress. Dr. Robert Branch sent a $7 super chat, says thanks for all your content, you've taught me a lot. You're very welcome, thank you so much for that support. Neil Segrin says still waiting for that axe video. Ah, that one's coming soon. <laughs> I know I've been saying that, but it's very much high on my priority list. We, we went, camping over Easter weekend up in the Upper Peninsula of Michigan and uh, uh, of course I had end up having um, medical emergency with my teeth afterwards so well during so that, that wasn't mm -hmm. the funnest thing in the world um, but while I was up there like you know we've got we're we have the blessing of being around a bunch of big woods you, you know a lot a lot of wood wooded country heavily wooded country with spruces and trees and hardwoods and things like that and so it's really easy to find found firewood right to cut it up right on spot and i was using this janky little like walmart hatchet oh <laughs> gosh i was like i've got to make i've got to make my axe <laughs> i've got to make my axe so yeah i could go to the store and go buy one or something it's like no I want to make my own nice, uh, uh, you know, Nordic uh, hewing axe, if you will, or felling axe. And um, so, yeah, that's, Niels, that's high on the priority pole, buddy. Because I don't really want to go too much more camping with this chintzy little hatchet. So it'll be coming soon. Plus, I have to show off Holland Anvil's uh, pass-through swedge block. So that will probably be used in, uh, I'll, that's will be it tag team video uh, to show off the Holland Anvil pass through sledge block. David Reednor, no, we did not film a full length uh, blacksmith cooking video, but I did get a few clips. Nope. Those are over on our Instagram at Christ Centered Ironworks. Yep. All right, we're going to start. We're going to use a set hammer now, and I'm going to start pulling out the horn. So you want to go to camera number two, Jess? Yes. So I'm going to find it, hold up, wait until I tell you. Go. Okay, when I come down, you need to hit it on the bias, not directly in line. Nope. You need to hit it flat. I'm tilting, but you need to, no, you need to come in flat. Tilt flat. You're coming in flat. I'm tilting. That drives that corner. Oh, I see, I see. Do you see what I'm saying? Yep. Now I've established a flat there. Come to the other side. Good evening, Mr. Coffee. Okay. I'll have to try this a little different here. I need you to. I'm going to tilt it. I'm going to tilt it. You got to come in flat. Yep. All right, we're starting to segment out that horn. And I might punch in a little closer. Mm -hmm, that would help, I think. As we go. Yeah, so let me get this hot again. And we're going to bring that in. We're going to bring this in just a little bit closer. Go to camera one. Yep. The Astilius asked if you've ever gotten your hand smashed doing that. Uh, nope. I keep my hand out from under the striker. <laughs> oh, I have had somebody miss hit somebody green that I just, 
I had just started working with, miss hit and smacked my wrist. Um, so you do have to pick your strikers wisely. Because that is a danger. Biggest thing is keep your head out of it. Mm -hmm. William Fleming, thank you for the $15 super chat. Love your videos, man. It helps so many people from all over. Keep it up, you make a good impression. Thank you, William. Thank you so much for that support. <coughs> so yeah, so I'm, so the videos on the channel, they're for everyone. <coughs> they're not just for professional Smiths. They're not just for rich Smiths. They're not just for poor Smiths. They're not for beginners. They're not for intermediates. They're for everyone uh, as a whole. If you watch the channel long enough, I'm sure you'll find a video that will jive with you. Um, and then if you don't, that's okay. There's plenty of other creators out there you can go watch. But in generally speaking, that's, you, you know, that's the kind of the thing with the channel is I try to appeal to everyone. And my thoughts around tooling, when people ask me on tooling, you know, I have stuck to this from the very beginning. It is not the tools that make the Smith. It is the Smith that makes the tools. So you can get started on the most bottom basin, you know, um, cheapest budget possible. Yeah, you can go out and buy a blue Harbor Freight anvil, you know, or get gifted one and start forging with your little three pound cross peen hammer and, and things like that, right? And you can get after the craft and start enjoying it and then think about upgrading later. You know, it's not so life and death. You don't have to go out and buy American made right off the gate, right? And spend $800,000 an anvil until you know that you like the craft long enough to stay with it. Um, it's just something I, I am for everybody and everybody's budgets. Now, if you ask somebody, hey, is this, you know, cheap anvil I bought on Amazon, is that going to be as good as the $800 anvil? Probably not, right? So don't be surprised when someone tells you that, no, it's not going to be as good as that, you know, premium anvil that you see everybody rant and rave about online. It gives you something to goal, gives you goals to set, you know, to work up to. Okay, focus. We're not trying to develop a lot of hitting power. We're just trying to ease this out. Let the hammer do the work. There we go. So yeah, when we're coming down to this kind of work, so so I'm talking I'm talking to Thomas like as I would in a project around here. Thomas works with me full time, and so you guys are getting to see a little bit about that. So what I'm telling him is I'm being very direct in my approach to telling him what I need and what I need done. So no smoke and mirrors. It's just do it this way. No, you're not doing it right here. Do it this way. You have to be able to take commands like that, and Thomas is really good at doing that and following through. When you're working with somebody and you're starting to strike with somebody, it's important to get on the same page. And how do we do that? By using our big boy words. Um, so that's how we get on the same page as, as we're forging along. And then you kind of settle into a rhythm eventually where you don't have to, you know, you don't have to talk about things all the time. Um, and each one of you knows exactly what you need to do. On a new project like this and a new process, right? This is the, like, this is number one of one that Thomas and I have forged together. If we were to make a bunch of these, like make a run of 20 or 30 of these, we wouldn't even have to talk to one another by the time we got to the end of this process. He would know exactly where to hit, how hard to hit, and we would have no other communication other than me setting the hammer exactly where I need to go. But as you can see right here, we've got this starting to be very isolated, that horn. And we're going to continue to draw that out. This is not where, uh, contrary to popular belief, this isn't the time for Mongo smash. You're not trying to get in here and, and Hulk smash this thing and like crazy here, right? This, we're kind of caressing the material out into the shape that we want because we're concerned about accuracy, not with just getting work done. We're wanting to do this accurately 
to make a very pleasing anvil shape. And also, I don't get butt hurt easily. Camera one. Yeah. So, I, I really don't get hurt feelings. You know, he can say, hey, this is how it is. It's just be directive, you know. <laughs> so, don't hit that side of the face. <laughs> it's, uh, yeah. it's, it's not good to pretend slap with Thomas right now. He'll win. You win. You win. <laughs> don't hurt me. <laughs> so, I, I was in the Army. So, pretty much Roy can say whatever he wants, and it's not going to hurt my feelings because I wasn't issued any. Uh-huh. <laughs> He cries on his lunch break, like a good employee should. No, I cry like a man in the shower. <laughs> Wax, uh, Wax and Wayne says, do you buy new or used railroads bikes? Uh, I don't buy either. So these are some really old scrap ones I had from eons ago. Uh, when I first got into smithing, I was given some for free for just scrap material. And uh, yeah, so I'm still working off the ones that I got, but I don't usually go out and buy railroad spikes. So if I don't buy railroad spikes and I'm not actively looking for railroad spikes, scrap or otherwise. So it's not a general thing that I use. Um, yeah, it's just not something I use. Now, if I was gifted a whole bunch, then I'm gifted a whole bunch and you know, that, that's a different story. But uh, I know you can buy them new and they're really not that expensive. So if you're into like making stake turners and things like that, and railroad spike hawks and knives and those sort of deals, um, I just suggest buying new. That way you can get a consistent thickness and quality and, and that sort of thing, so. Good. Ron Watch says, I bought a Vivor to replace my cart rail after seeing your destruction test. As a hobbyist, the best investment I have made in blacksmithing journey, my blacksmithing journey, thank you for what you do. Awesome. You're very welcome. You're very welcome. Oh, yeah. So like the Vivor, there, you know, there's a whole lot of commentary around those. Oh, those things are junk or they'll, they'll have this, they'll have that. You know, they're, they're, they're a garbage anvil. Well, I've proven that to be incorrect. You know, are they the best quality anvil? No, but you're not spending best quality prices on those best quality anvils. So, you know, it is a very much a beginner anvil. Is it suitable? Is it fit for purpose? Yes, it is. You can make it work. Is it, you know, a great $800 anvil? No, it is not. As long as you keep your expectations where they should be and be a realist, it'll be a great anvil for you. It'll be a great tool. Nice defined horn coming out there. It's working out nicely. We end up coming here probably to the sharper side of the anvil. And we're going to come up like that. Just get those established. So I hope you guys can see that Right now, the tools that we have used, we've used one striking hammer, one pair of tongs so far. I will have to switch to a smaller pair of tongs here in a moment. We have used a larger flatter. This could just be a piece of steel, a piece of steel gripped in a pair of tongs, right, to use as a flatter. It doesn't have to be something that you've concocted or anything special. And that's just to smooth the surfaces up a bit. And same thing with this. This is a set hammer, but this could, again, just be a square bit of steel that you can use as a set hammer for the purpose, held in a pair of tongs, right? And we haven't used any fa anything fancy. No special tools, no power hammers, no presses, no, no dies, no nothing. Just hammer and anvil work. You can get quite a bit of things accomplished. Again, it is not the tools that make the smith. It's the smith that makes the tools. 
You can do this on a Harbor Freight anvil. You could do this on the Achayo anvil. You could do this on the Doyle anvil. You could do this on the Atlas knife and tool anvil. You could do this on a chunk of steel stuck in the dirt. You can do this type work. It's about the skills that you develop as a smith over time. And I hope to constantly keep professing that and, and keep encouraging folks along the way as I do this, uh, this channel. And yeah, I hope that'll be the consistent message and theme that everybody understands and gets as we go forward. Rolling Pastures Farm says, great to see yep. so many people interested in keeping the craft alive. My great grandfather was the blacksmith slash farrier in Yale, Michigan. How many have been a blacksmith in your family? Uh, as far as I know, I'm the first. So uh, closest thing that my family got to blacksmiths was my grandpa on my father's side was a coal miner. So that was uh, about it. <laughs> And for me, uh, the closest thing I could say to a blacksmith would be my grandfather figure, and he was a farrier. And uh, that's how I learned the trade. Um, not only am I a blacksmith, but I am a farrier as well. And uh, above, contrary to popular belief, a lot of people think, oh, you're a blacksmith? Oh, you're automatically a farrier. And it's like, no, no, that's not all, always <laughs> the case. You know, so... There's more to blacksmithing than just being an ice maker, being a, a farrier, you know. We make pretty things too. Mm -hmm. That's good. Keith Penzing, the weather here today I think was supposed to be a high of 62. Yesterday it was yep. 80. Need to get no. We should open up our own anvil factory. Yeah. <laughs> How many people would buy a Christ Centered Ironworks brand anvil hand forged by Thomas and I? Well, like you, 60 pound? Oh my goodness, that'd be heavy. If you guys haven't already watched that video, we did take a railroad rail and make an anvil out of it. That was a lot of fun. <laughs> and, and there's a quite a little think. comedy thing in the beginning. Yeah. Nice. Looks like you got the horn pretty even. Well, of course. I'm a professional. That's what I'd do. That's Stephen what I'd do. Par Stephen Parsons says, once you get known for making knives and axes, that's all anybody will want you from you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So on any project, any forging project like this, um, it's important to keep in mind that you can keep spending time dressing this up all at the anvil. But remember, the more you heat a piece, the larger your grain becomes, okay? The, the longer you keep this in heat, the larger your grain structure is going to become and it's going to require more normalizing steps or more annealing. You might even have to go as far as annealing this piece. The other thing you're doing is every time this piece scales up and you see all that scale pop off on the anvil, that is coming from this surface. So you are losing mass, you are losing material to what you're doing. So it is important to be as efficient as you can to get to the shape that you're after. And then, so you forge thick and grind thin. Um, you don't want to spend a ton of time right here just kind of playing with this and getting this horn down razor sharp, you know, tight and everything because then you're going to come in later and you're going to grind this nice and smooth and get it all polished up, right? And so you want to leave it a little thick 
and you want you know you want to get it close to where you don't have to spend six hours at the grinder but you but you do want to keep that in mind now also we're going to flip this around and we're going to keep doing additional work so we don't want to thin this out so much to a point to where now it becomes a a piece that is now bending back and forth and chicken winging on us and we're having to constantly straighten it up as we go. So we're going to go ahead and work on the tail and work the tail section out. Once we get that nice flat taper to the tail, then we will go ahead and upset the rest of this material some more. And then that is a basically it. Um, then it's on to the grinding and the decorative work for this anvil um, at, at that point. We've got a good amount of upset work we got to do but we've got enough bolt here to be able to do it. It's just important to keep that in mind that you want to do things in stages. You can always come back and work a little more, but it's hard to put metal back that you've already forged too thin, right? So it's a lot harder to do that. So forge it a little thick, leave it chunky to begin with, get it upset, do what you gotta do, and then you can always come back and thin out areas later. We're going to draw out that tail more now. Good. Robert Lana says it's amazing how much steel was in that bolt head. Yeah, there's a bunch. There's a bunch more than you would think. Um, that's the fun thing about using a found item like a bolt, uh, that railroad bolt, for instance. Um, that was even with cutting material off because, again, we found an inclusion. We found a, 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 you know, a hot shut that was there from the manufacturer. So we had to grind all that away. So we lost a good bit of material, too, as well, that we could have you know, had to push and play around with. Um, but, you know, that's the way it goes. If you buy like a regular bolt from the store, like you get a one inch bolt or maybe get a two inch bolt, think how nice of a little anvil you could make from a two inch bolt. You know, get a couple buddies and uh, some time at your local guild meeting or something like that and say, hey, we're gonna make an anvil from a bolt. It's gonna be a lot of fun, right? Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, take turns striking and just pushing the material where you need it, which you need it in the horns, and uh, go from there. William Fleming sent a $2 super chat and says, how long have you had that point hand pointer? Ha ha. Uh, this goes way back. In fact, I was the very first person to uh, make one of those little hand pointer things on YouTube. I say YouTube because am I the very first person to ever make a hand, human hand? Absolutely not. Um, this uh, Mr. Thing, as we call him. Mm -hmm. Yep, I made this for a video. This one goes way back because people were getting on to me. I have, I have poor sensitivity in my hands. Um, uh, I've got really poor sensitivity in my hands. So I was pointing at a piece of metal and my fingers were smoking. And so people were getting, <laughs> it was unnerving some folks that I was searing my fingers off there. So uh, I comically, I made a little pointer finger to do that now there are all sorts of gestures that people have made from this and yes this is the index finger it's a pointer finger <laughs> there have been all sorts of variations of these that people have made i've seen people make barbecue roasting uh tongs and you name it out of uh you know hand so it's kind of a neat kind of a neat little concept there uh, it's a makes an excellent pointer and it's a good replacement for my finger it is indeed. So that's what that's been what like six, six years, years six and a half years mm -hmm. at least ago. Yep, I've had that's that thing. Right, that's crazy. Let's mm -hmm. go to camera number two, Jess. Okay. Okay. Neil Lawson, yes, he is left-handed. Okay, hold up. So what I'm gonna have to do here is I'm gonna have to switch tact. Um, this square is okay, but it's not really driving out the amount of material that I want. So I'm gonna come in with a fuller tool, with a little bit of a fuller to help push that material out further to where I want it. I see a crack that I want to take care of. Yeah, well, yeah, it's going to be in there. We're going to, we're going to have to drive this out more before we can take care of that. Okay. So you're going to hand me uh, the large, broad fuller. Now, if you have a soft face hammer, 
You could use the cross, so if you have a saw face hammer, that means one, uh, a chunk of mild steel that's not hardened, you could actually hit the face of a cross peen hammer and use the rounded peen of the cross peen as your fuller tool. Um, I just happen to have the big one. I just happen to have a tool made up for this little hand tools that I can use. So we can go to camera number two, Jess. Mm -hmm. So I, I've got a tong held tooling that I can use uh, in replacement of that. So that's what we'll be using on this particular, this particular ordeal. David Renor says, as someone with minimal tools, I appreciate that you do a number of videos that are not with power hammers and $5,000 plus tools. You're very welcome. Um, that has actually been a conscientious decision here in this shop. That, that isn't because I don't have expensive tooling or I don't have presses. I have a power hammer. Thomas was using that the other day to make some tooling. Um, I've got a 37 ton press. I've got fly presses. I've got this sweet little treadle hammer kit that we're going to be giving away here in just a little bit um, for you, you know smack around hot steel i do have tooling in the shop i have had a whole bunch of a whole host of variations of different tools in my shops uh, over the years but i made a conscientious choice years and years and years ago to make that the point it's not about the tools it's about the smith it's about you know uh, your skills as a smith so uh, I got started when I first was in it, and I first started getting around, hanging around other smiths, and I knew other smiths existed out there in this wide old world, way back before the days of YouTube, if you can believe that. Um, when I first started getting introduced to other smiths being out there in this big wide world of smithing, I had found out that like I would always look at something that somebody was doing, and they'd be on a power hammer or they'd be on a press, and I couldn't afford those things. So I'm like, oh, if I only had a power hammer, I would be so good. I'd be so, I'd be just like that guy. I'd be so good if I had a power hammer. Like, yeah, it must be nice to have a press, because if I had a press, I too would be that good. And um, again, that was just ignorance on my end. You don't know what you don't know. And really what it comes down to is being really good at your fundamental forging practices. If you know what your fundamentals are, if you're really good, if you've mastered the fundamentals, you can take those to any piece of equipment and make beautiful ironwork. And the only thing that a power hammer or press does is helps uh, shortchange the labor cost. You know, it helps speed things up. But you can, you can go watch old Westinghouse videos where they're forging anchors and they're doing it all by hand. There's no power hammers there. They're doing all this craziness by hand. Now they worked out the large billets with the power hammer, but then when they're doing the forge welding and all this other stuff, it was manipulating everything with <laughs> lots of guys, lots of guys doing all the manipulation on these things. So I try to put an emphasis on that in the channel is that it's not the tools that make the Smith, it's the Smith that makes the tools. So thank you for picking up on that. I appreciate that. We're gripping it weird. Okay. Kind of hit back into me a bit. Put on this. Good. We'll heat it up again and we'll take that squad out of it there. So we can see how this is coming out now. Pretty good? Yeah, it's coming along. And then you'll have to grind out that cracking. So, so whenever you're working with a bolt, 
You're bound to get some folds and some hot shuts in there. And as long as you dress those out with a little bit of grinding, these railroad bolts, they're actually a little bit more difficult because they actually have several different areas that can create a hot shut for you or a cold shut further on down the road. So, uh, you know, those you have to kind of work with as you go. A regular bolt, like a hardware store bolt, it's not as difficult. Uh, this just has a weird like double, you know, has like a weird double step that you have to contend with as you go along. Just something to keep in mind. Um, you know, you dress it as you go and that's okay. If you don't have an angle grinder, I've been having Thomas just for expediency, going to the other room and angle grinding out any of the hot shuts. If you don't have that, you could do it with a basic farrier's rasp. It's really not that hard. It doesn't take that much more time to do it with the farrier's rasp. Um, so you can work on it like that as well. Are we ready? All right, this down. Okay. I really love controlled forging. Nice. Look how smooth that made that. Mm -hmm. So nice. Very good. Nice. Fairly even width. We got a little pooch there to take out. Lightly. Good. And that's one thing a power hammer can't do, guys. <laughs> hey, let me come down a little bit with it. There you go. No, you need to come down on okay. it. There you go. Now you found the angle. Nice. William Kelly says, is that going to be a London pattern anvil? Uh, yeah, more of like a London pattern or traditional London pattern. So we're just, we're just barely tapping this thing, mainly taking care of some of the highs. That's good enough. Look at that. Is that pretty cool or what? Mm -hmm, yeah. Come a long way from a railroad boat so far, huh? Mm-hmm, definitely. And now you've got some choices to make if you're making one of these at home. Now you get to choose. Do I want this to be an anvil anvil where it's got a little base and everything? Or do I want to turn this into a stake anvil? Because maybe you just want to upset this enough to where you can uh, forge down like a little sharp tab on the end, you know, segment out a piece and then you can drive it into a stump. Maybe you want to take and forge a tab on this so you can buy, forge a tab into it, shoulders, so this way you can bite it in a vise, right? You have a lot of different options now that you could do once you've worked out uh, the top. One of the other things you could do, you could decide if you want to put a cute little hearty hole in there, a pritchel hole. I think we should do that. You could take and do that now with it if you wanted to. So there's a lot of different routes that you can take. Now, if you're going to do one of these on this, I suggest drilling it and then drifting it to size. Um, if you try to punch it through with this thin a mass, it's going to end up swelling a lot and you're going to get a lot of de deformation um, and suck down and that's not what you want. I would drill it and then drift it to size um, if you're going to put a hardy hole in it. All right. You want me to grind that? Go ahead and grind that, Thomas. I think that'll be good. Get those, kind of alleviate some of those little cracks there. Yeah. And then, yeah, then we'll keep upsetting the material and stuff. Crack. Yep, just work on that. GWI Railroad says, awesome job. You and Thomas work well together. Well, thank you, GWI. Appreciate it. All right. Um, I'm loving this. This is a lot of fun. Uh, so far, I've, I've been holding up pretty okay. 
Uh, we need to give some stuff away, though, mm -hmm. don't we? We do. It's 622. 622. Wow, it's time has flown. Mm -hmm. We were a little late to the stream, weren't we? Um, like five minutes. Just five minutes late? Yeah. Okay. Back of free catfish. Yes, this is our full-time job. Roy's been yep. doing this full-time for about uh, 10 years. What, full-time? No, yeah. longer than that. Keep since, going. 12. Since 2012. It's 12 yeah. years full-time. Because it was three years, because I'm coming on year 15. It's 15 years total. And yeah. So I had three years in it as just a hobby. Fourth year was kind of like hobby slash business. Mm -hmm. Well, I was just starting to sell my work. Mm -hmm. You know. Oh, and yeah. then after that, yeah. I was full time. Mm -hmm. so. Ha! Got the mm -hmm. fact checker. <laughs> I fact checked the fact checker. That's how it is. Well, I always base it off of your accident was in 2012, so. What's that? That I base it off of the fact But that's accident. inaccurate. I, I had been smithing a long time mm -hmm. prior to that. Yeah, so. we've been selling some stuff. Yeah. And we had been selling stuff a long time prior to that, so. Yeah. It's an inaccurate number, and that wasn't at 10 years either. It, you know, time rolls on, right? It is mm -hmm. 2023. It is, yeah, <laughs> yeah, very true. Wax and Wayne says, how many hours of work a day do you do? Mm. You yes, ask Thomas, not enough. <laughs> I casually stroll into the shop at 10 p.m. A.M. 10 a.m. Yeah, yeah, I mean, 10 a.m. <laughs> yeah, there you go. P.m. A.M. Who knows? So, uh, when I was doing when I was doing production smithing, I worked in the shop about 16 hours a day. That's what I did every single day for 16 hours a day. Um, I'm in the fortunate position now that I don't do that. I don't do any production smithing. Uh, any production smithing we do do, I have Thomas uh, do most of that, so he, he does some of the production smithing now, along with the CNC work. Um, so I will probably spend my average day in the shop, is probably more like closer about six hours a day, if I'm being honest, actually in the shop. The rest of the time I spend like a solid six to eight hours of other work. So whether that be quote work, whether that be working on designs, design work, editing, um, you know, video work, things like that, right? Like, so there, there's a lot that goes into running a business and the majority of it is not actually being behind the anvil, surprisingly enough. I know it's a shocker. You think that you would, as a blacksmith, you're like, oh, as a blacksmith, I'll just get to forge all the time, no? you have to try to sell all the time as a professional blacksmith and then forge to catch up with what you sold you know so that's that's kind of how that works out so i would say probably about six hours a day i'm in the shop of which there are days where i have forging days there are days i have film forge film days and then there are just days where i'm just catching up with shop nonsense fixing whatever has broken for the week so yep and that's kind of how that, that breaks down. Kid KV, welcome. We're just getting ready to give away something. Yeah, Kid KV, welcome, welcome. So I've had a recent, I've had a recent kind of epiphany moment uh, with myself that, you know, I have to start kind of being honest with myself. Uh, like as the YouTube thing has taken off, it takes way, way, way more time from me than what, um, you can leave that off the side, we're gonna give something away. Um, it takes way more time from me than what it used to be whenever I was forging a as far as a full-time profession. So when you think of someone forging full-time as a profession, generally what you think is eight hours a day minimum in the shop, swinging a hammer, making a thing for a client of some sort, right? And with the new world and the new economy of blacksmithing the way that it is, that is actually very seldom the case. So I am, I would say right now, I'm actually more of a professional YouTuber than I am a professional blacksmith. And the reason for that being is I've got a two year waiting list for my work and I probably won't get to any of it because I get to make the things that I want to make thanks to you, our kind supporters out here on the channel, right? Uh, so I get to make cool stuff. I get to make the things that I want to make when I want to make them. 
and I don't have to be beholden right now to customers, um, to clients. I have done all sorts of work in my craft. If YouTube ends up not panning out at some point, I will go right back to making custom iron work for clients. I'll dig in onto that two-year pile uh, mm -hmm. of, of, of work, right? That's, that's backlogged. But right now, as it sits, I am more of a professional blacks, YouTube blacksmith, which is kind of a weird thing. So uh, some people will discount you uh, for that. They're like, oh, well, you're a professional YouTube blacksmith, so you don't really know anything. You're just, a, you're just one of them YouTuber weirdos. And um, I'm fine. I don't care. As long as the check cash is the same, couldn't care less. <laughs> couldn't care less. Uh, but it is an interesting thing because on one end, it's almost like living a retirement in a way, it's, but it's still work. So there's a ton of work into producing videos. Anybody who's ever half-heartedly tried to knock together a video will know that. Uh, so to do good video quality work at the upper end limits that I'm trying and striving for, that like you see John Switzer do, that takes such an immense amount of work to do you don't really have time for just about anything else. So, um, because to make very informative, entertaining, well shot, well put together videos, stuff like that, work with sponsors, it takes an immense amount of your personal time up uh, in the shop and it soaks up a lot of time. So, so yeah, so just full disclosure out there, I would probably say I am less of a professional blacksmith now and I am more of a professional YouTuber. <laughs> which is a weird thing for me to say because for the majority of my career, I have been the opposite of which. I've been more of a professional blacksmith, reliant upon jobs coming through to keep the lights on. Keith Tenzing asks, how long does it take for you to make a YouTube video from filming to publishing it on YouTube? So it used to not take that long, hence I was able to do a bunch because my videos were cruddy. Um, they were mm -hmm. cruddily shot, they were poorly lit, they were poorly scripted because there was no scripting. <laughs> I said a lot of ums, uhs, uh, uh, right? I did a lot of, uh, I had a lot of missteps. I had a lot of working through to, uh, you know, get to where I'm at now. So they used to not take that long at all. I could knock out a video in five, 10 minutes. So I was like, hey, what's the big deal? Well, I wasn't putting that much effort into it. That's why it only took me five, 10 minutes. I was trimming the front of the edit and trimming the end of the edit. And that was all I would do for editing work. Now, just like the current, the most recent video of the Atlas Knife and Tool uh, Gas Forge that I did, I did a review on that. Just the intro segment took me three and a half hours. Just the intro. Like and it's 19 seconds. seconds. Oh, yeah. 19 seconds for three and a half hours it took. So the actual filming took a full two days of work. The filming took two days of work. The editing took three days of work. So it took five days in total for me to produce that video. Now, is that the best video I could possibly do? Probably not. I should have probably put even more time into it, but there's a limit, right? There's a limit that I can put in on each video. And so, so that just gives you an idea that when you're taking a week to make one video, right? Because all the fancy editing gear and things like that, um, and all the fancy camera work and all this other stuff, it takes a lot of time. And so that has taken over more and more uh, in my life and as a blacksmith. Um, so the education side is very important to me as a smith. I want to see, you know, up and comers get their start and uh, be able to bless people. That's why we're doing the giveaway streams, right, honey? Yep. That's why we've done them since. I don't know what, stream number three? <laughs> I, don't, yeah. I don't know. So, for so long, we've been doing giveaway mm -hmm. streams for because I have a vested interest in helping people uh, grow in the craft. And so with that being said, we're going to give a, we're gonna give something away right now and we're mm -hmm. going to continue on this little piece. But uh, yeah, so I know that's a long-winded answer, but it, it's kind of a long-winded question to, to answer mm -hmm. a little bit. There, there's more facets to it than how long do you spend making videos? <laughs> <laughs> more than I like some days, you know, mm -hmm. some days I like to just get after forging. But the cool thing about being a professional YouTube blacksmith here, although some people would disparage that career path, the cool thing is, is I can undertake things now and be crowdfunded 
whereas I would have never been able to do those for a client, right? So I can do a project that might take me multiple months and really invest a ton of time into that project, right? And I don't have to worry about what's keeping my lights on, mm -hmm. right? So I don't have to like, okay, I got to knock out like that 5,000th bottle opener in order to pay rent this month. Instead of me having to take and do that, I can focus my time honing my skills in the craft on the th things that I'm most interested in, which is really, really cool. And, uh, and then I can also share that journey with everybody who's watching the channel, which is a lot of fun for me. So, so part of that, we're, we're gonna make the very first thing we give away. The acanthus leaf. Some acanthus leaf facts here, so. Mm -hmm. Yep. Put the hand work, model. Hand well, that doesn't do anything. He's got to be down at the anvil. <laughs> I'm right. oh, I'm yeah. Give me that. I can't read. <laughs> he has failed as a hand model. <laughs> see, see how that works? There you go. There you go. Very graceful. You recovered. I'm so proud. <laughs> so proud. So uh, these are acanthus leaves we've made. I believe they are on the website are now, now, Jessica, yeah, over sure. at blacksmithingblanks.com. Support a poor... YouTube blacksmith. <laughs> Allow Roy to keep being a schluff, you know, by uh, supporting my habit, my addiction, by buying blanks. Anyways, so this is just one type of acanthus leaf. Uh, there's multiple types and styles we have online. Some I've used in various projects before. Some of these you guys have seen. Some of you haven't seen. So I'm going to give I'm going to give away this little acanthus leaf starter pack. Now, you can take this and you can forge it as is and buy more blanks from our website, or you can use this as a template and, you know, trace around it and uh, be able to make more acanthus leaves, even out of thinner material or thicker material. Uh, I know there's one guy that likes to buy our blanks and do that. He likes to make stuff out of super thick material, like 3 8 plate, and he torch cuts it out, uh, but he uses ours, ours as templates to do so. Um, so we're going to give away one of these uh, multi-packs here. The way that you get entered, we can go back to the main cam, Jess. All right. The way that you get entered to win this, you have to be part of the channel. You just have to be mm -hmm. here actively commenting. Jessica is going to scroll at random and pick one name at random from the people who are actively commenting. Now, you, you generally, it's a lot easier for her to find a comment if it has something with the word of whatever we're giving away. So mm -hmm. when it comes to the treadle hammer, say something about a treadle hammer. Yep. If you want to try to be entered to win. If it has something to do with acanthus leaves, say acanthus leaves or tuss leaves or leaves or something to take and indicate uh, that you are interested in winning one of these acanthus leaves. So I'm going to ring the anvil and when I come to a stop, Jessica's going to stop scrolling and pick one random person mm -hmm. in the comment section. And that's how, we, that's how we've always done our giveaway lives and, mm -hmm. and uh, it's, it's worked pretty well, hasn't it, honey? It has, yeah. For all these years. It sure has. Pretty good? Mm -hmm. All right. Are people commenting? They are. They are. They were getting ready while you're talk, talking about it. Yep. Mm -hmm. All right. We ready? Yes. In three, two, one. <laughs> Who do we have, Jess? We have John Mayberry with Blank Me. Hey, John Mayberry. You've been blanked, sir. <laughs> Blankety blanked. You've been blanked. <laughs> Congratulations, John Mayberry. Uh, you are the winner of this acanthus leaf starter pack. So, again, for anybody who's interested, you can find these over at our website and loads more at blacksmithingblanks.com. Mm -hmm. Here's your chance, Thomas. Dot mm -hmm. com. <laughs> what was that? What was that website? What? Blacksmithingblanks.com. <laughs> And I was trying to read all the awesome comments. <laughs> yeah, that's what Hard it is. Hard to when it's scrolling through. Yeah. What's up? What did you say? Uh, Rigid Iron Works. We've been doing the CNC since 2020. Yep. 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 We started the CNC portion of the business in 2020. What a year to start it in, huh? <laughs> Beth Roach says, we demoed one of your leafs at our guild meeting. Awesome. Awesome. I'm glad to, glad to hear that you did that. Um, I, think we, I think we met at the... Uh, uh, Central Virginia Blacksmiths Guild, did we not? And you guys picked up some of the leaves there, I believe. Valhalla, we're doing pretty good. Roy's, well, Roy's teeth are recovering, so I'll let him speak for himself. Who? 
Valhalla asked how you're doing. Hey, hey Alex. Um, well, uh, I've had better days. My teeth are recovering from uh, having a lot of oral uh, pain problem. Basically, I had a root canal that got reinfected, and so I had to have a retreat on a root canal and an antidontis. And uh, if anybody's ever had that kind of pain before, you know that it is absolutely brutal. And brutal it was. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, so I had to have some uh, emergency work done a little while ago. So I am on drugs right now. Probably shouldn't say that. YouTube censors. I am on magical pixie powder. That makes Roy feel good on the inside and make his tum-tum hurt. Pixie sticks. That's what I am. <laughs> I offered to help, but he said, no, no. No, no. We're good on that. <laughs> oh, all right. We have main cam? Yes, this is are. the best way to probably show yeah, this off, I think. Is. So, mm -hmm. all right. So this is a design I have come up with uh, for a vice-mounted tong slash hammer rack. Uh, so this would go on a post, you know, say a steel post, or you could drill it and mount it to a wood post where you are mounting the, uh, the post vise. So you know, post vise usually has like a fork or it has a, uh, you know, a branch that comes off that you can mount it to a post, obviously. And so that would bolt through here, and then you would have this integrated tong slash hammer rack on your actual post vise for your post. So that's what this is here. And uh, so I designed this. This is the concentric one we offer online. And I've got part of this idea, this concept, from Uncle Buck's Forge. So Uncle Buck used to take and sell these right here, this type of hammer and tong rack uh, for a post post mounted situation and so I decided I wanted to expand that a little bit and offer more uh, you know slotted designs have more more whole options that you can take and you know put your tools or tongs into so we'll be giving away one of these Uncle Buck's ones designed as well as one of these Chrysler and Ironwork design ones so yeah so it, it's kind of cool I'm like hey that's a neat idea I want to kind of do it my own way with one of these. So we're going to give one of these away, and then we'll give away one of these Uncle Buck designed ones as well. And before anybody trolls me in the comment section, I have expressed permission from Uncle Buck to re-replicate his designs. Uh, he no longer makes them. He's retired out of that uh, for the blacksmithing community, and he gave me express permission that I can make those and sell them on the website. So there you go. That's full disclosure there. Are we ready? They are. Ready to give that away? Yeah. So again, something about post vice, something another. Mm -hmm. Sound yep. good? Yep. All right, you ready? Mm -hmm. Three, two, one, go. <laughs> Who do we have, Jess? We have Roger Caldwell with Rack, Rack, Rack. Hey, hey, Roger Caldwell. Congratulations, brother. Rack, 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 sir. You racked it up. Another win. <laughs> What's that, Roger? You want to give it to me? <laughs> yeah, that's fine. <laughs> so get with us. You know what to do. Get with us through the contact email in the description. I believe Jessica's probably yep. already typed that up, huh? Uh, no. Well, no. I mean, it's down there. Okay, it's down I there. didn't recently. We have not that mentioned that, comments. but that's how you get a hold of these things. You contact us through the contact email in the description. Mm -hmm. If you don't do that or you go to the wrong email and we don't find you, you don't win the item. So mm -hmm. go through the contact email mm -hmm. that is linked in the description. And $48. Yeah. yeah. Correct? <laughs> yes. Yep. You got like read up. It's in the description. Mm -hmm. So, but there you go. All right, we're ready for Uncle Bucks. Yeah, do we want to give away the Uncle Bucks one as well? Might as well, yeah. This would be good. They're already pre-commenting. Huh? Yeah, they're pre-commenting. Yeah, on so it. so we'll have that to do. Mm -hmm. Then we'll take a few heats. So go mm -hmm. ahead and get that hot, Thomas. We'll take a few heats, and then we will give away Thomas's uh, mm -hmm. S hooks okay. that he has. Shank and then or the uh, shank. Yep, get the shank hot now. Get the shank hot. Right. That's a weird comment with, <laughs> with no contacts, wasn't it? Get the shrink hot. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, geez. There we went. <laughs> there we went with it. All right. So this one, this now will draw for somebody to win the Uncle Bucks. All right. Ready? Yes. Everybody ready? Uh-huh. Three, two, one, go.
Who do we have, Jess? We have Bob's Fab and Welding with Don't Rack Me Up. Hey, Bob's Fab and Welding, congratulations. We won't rack you up too bad. Congratulations, you're the winner of the Uncle Bucks Forge uh, Post Vice Mount, hammer and tong rack. If you guys are interested in those, those are a new product that are on the website. So be sure to check out www.blacksmithingblanks.com. There you go, dot com. <laughs> Couple of super chats I'll bring to attention. Mm. Bernard Bushy, uh, $10 super chat says, John Thank Switzer. Thank you, Bernard. John Switzer re recently mentioned doing online courses and you have mentioned the same. Any thoughts on a collaboration? Oh, for online courses. Well, I don't know about online courses. Me and John, we've collaborated uh, quite a bit in the past. Um, John's a great guy, hell of a smith. So um, I'd definitely be into doing collabs in the future with John, um, no matter what you want to get up to, as long as it's something cool and it both fits our work schedule. So love to do that. Black Collar Ironworks used his member chat and said mandatory recruitment for the Black Collar Legion coming up soon. We're looking forward to meeting our lucky recruits. Ba -ha -ha -ha. <laughs> Thank you, Black Collar Ironworks. Greatly appreciate you, brother, as always. I just always. want to call him Colonel Black Collar Ironworks. Yeah, it's Colonel, Admiral, General. Which one's yeah. high? What's the highest? The general. highest? General, right? Five star? Four yeah, star? Five star general. Five star general, Black Collar Ironworks. <laughs> He just needs to change his name from Black Collar Ironworks mm -hmm. to Five Star General. Mm -hmm. Just mm -hmm. that's it, Five Star General. Unless he doesn't want to be an officer, because I know I didn't want to be, so he can be, <laughs> you know, Sergeant Major. He can simmer it down, yeah. come back down to the, the, the enlisted. To, to the enlisted level. Bill will ask: Are cone mandrels always solid, or are some hollow? Uh, both. They are solid and they are hollow. Um, just depends. So, you know, there's not really any with a like a large floor mandrel. Most large floor cone mandrels are hollow. Um, not all, but most. Most of those, because you don't really benefit anything from them being solid, right? So you're more interested in the outside curvature, okay? Making wagon hubs and, you know, things like that, right? Uh, working on shrinking, you know, uh, shrinking wagon tires and rims and things like that. So you're, you're more interested in that outside conical shape and you're not necessarily in, interested in having a ton of mass on the inside to hammer against. So it just really depends on the manufacturer. There was a wide variety of cone mandrels, anvils, and all sorts of price points at one time in this great craft of blacksmithing. So some of them even, I've seen cone mandrels, floor mandrels that have holes in them. Now, was that from the factory or did somebody drill a hole in the flange uh, later on? I don't know, it both looked old, you know, so some been bolted to the floor, some just sat, you know, naturally and were rolled around the shop. Uh, I've seen it a bunch of different ways. Great question though. Keith Tenzing, if you join SOFA, they have monthly meetings. They also have uh, classes regularly there. Mm -hmm. And of course, you can come to Quad State, the best and biggest blacksmithing gathering in the US. Yep, which hopefully we will be at this year. Mm -hmm. That is in fourth weekend of September. That every is year. the plan. I say hopefully because every time I say something specifically, I have health setbacks. So Roy's going to shut up. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Not make things so downright dependent on me. Well, you start to get out of order there. Hey, right here. Well, okay. We got that high side to work. Yep. Well, so we want to do controlled upsetting. Well, so see how we get developing a high side there? Yep. You need to drive, you need to drive back into the body, just like we were hammering out a rhombus. Yep, nope, not right on it. You want to drive back here towards the core of the material. Too much angle, flatten out. There you go. 
slow. Okay, we'll need to get it hot again, and we're going to push it a bit more when we come out again. Hmm? No, so what you're going to do is we're going to come down with this, and you want to, you don't want to come down like this. We're not trying okay. to bend it more. We're trying to come down here okay. and put our blows more in the core. I see. So let go. We're trying to put our blows in the core, pushing this way. Okay. Stay away from this edge, because if all you do is hammer on that edge, all you're doing is collapsing it further. Yeah. So you want to hit in the core this way. Okay. Gotcha. Okay? And that should drive that back. We'll get that hot again. And then keep this, keep the horns out of the fire. Because yep. those are going to be, off. yep. Well, not just that they're going to roast off. We don't want them to move around on us, right? Yep. We want those to stay solid. We don't want them to chicken wing back and yep. forth on us. So, All right, questions, comments, complaints, yes. concerns, Jessica. Did I earn my shirt today? <laughs> Well, uh, first off, Black Collar Ironwork gifted 20 memberships, so he is expanding the lesion. Thank you so much, Black Collar Ironwork. So let me, let me state real quick about that um, since we're doing that. Thank you, Black Collar Ironworks, for supporting our channel. Not only in the last live stream, this live stream, you are a huge help and a huge support. So I greatly appreciate you. But I also want to let people know that anybody who's been gifted a membership, take advantage of those membership perks. Go to the membership tab on the channel. It's right under the channel banner. You go to the main channel, Christ Center Networks, here on YouTube. And you should be able to go under the membership community tab. And you'll be able to look at all the perks. And you will have the link to the live stream, the show after the show that we will be doing later on this evening. At from 9 p.m. to whenever, which is just a hangout stream where we all sit down, hang out, chat, and uh, I answer all of your guys' life's questions, <laughs> life burning questions, that sort of thing. William Kelly, yes, we do recommend selling on Etsy. We've been on there since I think about 2016. Yep. And we sell stuff regularly. All right, so you're just driving back in here. Well, we're going to analyze the work, see how it's pushed more back. Mm -hmm. So you're going to keep aiming forward to center and back. Don't hit on that other edge at all. Well, now we can push that down a bit more. Well. Okay, it's not looking half bad. We are going to have to take a little bit of that bow out of it. It's got a bit of a bow there. So hit me one right in there. Again. Good. All right, we're going to go ahead and uh, just square up a little bit. So hammer right here. Nope, not lightly, just good pop. Well. Well, again, well, then give me a pop right in there. Good. So if you guys can see how that's coming up, mm -hmm. looking nice. Yeah. Do I gotta hit those fish hooks? Nope, we're gonna take care of that in the next heat. We get it nice and hot before we mess with that. So nice controlled forging. Mm -hmm. She should be getting close to being able to stand on her own. Yeah. We'll keep driving that up and we'll have her body and her feet done. All right. Oh, and there was five people who said they would take a forged anvil. Oh yeah? Mm-hmm. Oh, if we made our own. Yeah. Yeah. Started our own anvil manufacturing. Mm-hmm. Roy oh. has seen all kinds of gigantic manufactured hammers like massive ones he's like i could fit that in the barn yeah <laughs> like every time he sees one of those i'm like uh-huh <laughs> i still think the drop hammer needs to happen yeah put a big old massive 30 foot tall drop hammer in here 
that would really shake up the neighborhood. <laughs> Mystery Sniper says, I have a head of a 10-peen cross-peen hammer. What would it be used for? A 10-pound cross-peen hammer? Mm -hmm. um, forging. <laughs> so uh, if, if you have a large hammer head like that, that is almost relegated specifically to striking work. So that was something that you'd put on a longer hammer handle and use with a striker have a striker use it. Uh, the other thing that you could do with a nice big 10 pound cross beam hammer, if you had bought like a treadle hammer or say you want to build your own, uh, you can make a small treadle hammer out of it um, and, and use it that way. Put a nice long handle on it and a spring and a bit of rope and boom, you're in business with a treadle hammer. So keep it going. We need it, we need it warm, warm. Not, not roasting off, but warm, warm. You'll have to check it. Bill will ask, Good. since the barn roof is so tall, how high does the chimney for the forge go up, out of the wall or through the roof? So, I don't have a chimney right now. I use coke, um, so I don't have any volatiles as far as, you know, smoked um, uh, that is coming off of the forge. The forge itself, so I plan on building a stone hearth right here and where this forge is at right now. And so when I build out the stone hearth, it will be a total of about eight, nine feet up. And so, and then it will have an additional about six foot tall um, stack on top of that as far as like a nice hood on top of the stone hearth. And then uh, from there, it'll have that additional to get all the way up to the roof line. Now, it won't be coming out the peak. It'll be coming out kind of midways. So I should think that it's be about 10, 12 foot of pipe that'll have to go up and out through the roof beyond that. So it's going to be a fairly tall structure. Uh, that's the best way I can do it. Where I'm at now, I'm kind of out in the middle, so there's not really a good place for me to secure a pipe that's out here. I'd have to really cable it out like crazy um, to suspend a pipe. And so I'm going to build a stone hearth that comes all the way up, and it's going to have like church windows in it for you to be able to work, uh, you know, to work out of. It would be very cool when I get it done. So that's a project that Thomas and I have on the go eventually in here. Lost it. Fudge. I tell you, a flatter and a set, like set hammers and flatters are underrated tools. You could do quite a bit of controlled forging. with them. All right, we need to get this hot again. Give me a second, Bill. I'm going to put that there. Give me a wet. There, we've got that straightened back up. So if you keep checking this as it's going down, right? Is that pretty cool? Mm -hmm, yeah. Right. So we're just going to keep checking nice. this. Huh? I said it's shaping up nice. Yep. So we're going to keep checking this as it comes on down to where we want it. We want to make sure we're kind of getting it nice and flat and even. If you go too far with it too, too quickly, you're going to get this weird taper in it. You're going to build up. It's, it's going to be bad. So you have to take it in stages. Um, it's okay to take time on these to get it where it needs to be. Peter Engelbert says a 50 ton treadle hammer. <laughs> 50 ton. Could be. Could be, Pete. Oh, put a nice big thousand pound ram that gets carried all the way up, 30 feet up in the air. Yeah. Kel the blacksmith says, How well is that poor man's flatter holding up for you? I have a few that students use and abuse. Really well. That's been my. 
go to for years. Years and years and years and years now, so. Yep, poor boy's flatter. Not my idea. I learned this from a guy by the name of Bob Cruchank, the working man's friend from Sofa many, many years ago. I'd like to think that Bob, sadly, he's passed on, but I'd like to think that he's smiling from where Smith in heaven right now, <laughs> knowing that I'm still using tools that he taught me to make and playing around with. Animals Creation says all these plans, when you plant, when do you plan on sealing up that shop to stop the draft and keep it from snowing inside during winter? <laughs> so it is sealed up. It is really getting sealed up. The problem is the roof's not sealed. So the plans with the roof, the roof has to get replaced. It has to be replaced before I take and even work on the, uh, on the actual forge. Hence, no forge hood because roof needs to be replaced first. Oh, and roof is very expensive to replace. Let me see what we got here. She's just red. Okay, just keep her going there. Keep her moving. What else, babe? Keith Tenzing says, how do you decide shop time and administration days? Uh, don't. I take it as it comes to me, brother. That's it. I, I, don't have a, I don't have a set schedule. Every time I've tried to have a set schedule, we're going to wait on let that soak. Um, every time I've tried to have a set schedule in the shop, something that is not on the schedule pops up. Every time. It, like it doesn't matter like somebody has a complaint or or, or there's a call that I need to make or uh, something something always pops up so the second I set down and I'm like okay today I'm doing nothing else but this I have there I have therefore just tied my own noose uh, <laughs> and now my time is no longer my own so the second I say I'm gonna do nothing but film today I will do everything but film that day so, so I do my best not to do that. I just roll with what the day requires of me. Um, there are times where I'm just like, absolutely not. I won't touch anything else. And I'm, I'm, I'm very, uh, um, I don't know. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm very much a, a prima donna when it comes to that sometimes. I'm just like, nope, ain't doing it. It's like, but it would make us, nope, don't care, not doing it. I can be, become very stiff necked sometimes, even against my own good. Um, but generally sometimes that you have to do that but for the most part uh, I do not try to plan out what I'm, amount of time I'm going to spend administratively the amount of time I'm going to spend forging uh, I just take the day as it comes to me and that seems to work out the best I get the most work done that way being the rising tide in the shop a lot of times it's administrative work <laughs> slant going there. All right, we're going to have to get this hot in here. We're going to have to force this body back square. So we got a little carried away on our upset, and now we've started a little bit of a lean. So we have to correct that before we go on to that next step. But I think that base is almost where I would like it to be. 
on that. We might take it up a bit more, but it's getting nice. All the work to turn it into a little anvil, huh? Mm -hmm. Again, remember, we started with a six inch length of railroad bolt. And we've compressed this into an anvil now. So. Milky Toast says, do you usually buy or make your workbenches? Uh, I would make. So there's not really a workbench. Basically, just about all the tools, I'm at a point now where I have enough tools to be able to make tools that I make all my tools uh, uh, things that I do. Now, that being said, if I do find something that will fit my space on the rare occasion, I will buy uh, over build because building takes me away from shop time. The shop time, my labor in the shop, what I need to make per hour in the shop is different than, you know, what the, uh, than what buying a $150 workbench would be, right? So what I might take a whole day to build what I consider a proper work table, like a welding table, if I can find one that's already suits the purpose and it's 500 bucks, it's at a discount for me to go ahead and buy the work table that's 500 bucks that would fit. Oftentimes what happens though is you find a table but it doesn't really fit your space and so you end up just making do with something that somebody else built custom for their shop. Um, so it just really depends on what it is. Rolling Pastures Farm says, what's the favorite piece you have made so far? Um, so I would have to say my favorite piece that I have made so far um, is probably, I don't know, I really like that French Baroque door knocker I made a little while ago. So I really like that. Um, I also like the French Baroque style sign bracket that I made a while ago. I uh, really like that. So that was kind of one of my favorites. So far, that's it. It's more of a styling than, than an individual item. I have made a ton of pieces in, in my time smithing as a career. So it, it's kind of, I don't know. Some of them, they were really cool. They were very challenging. They were difficult, but they were for a client. And they were the client's design and they were the client's idea, not mine, right? Um, so that was their ideal piece of ironwork, not mine. I was just making it to spec versus now, like I said, I get to kind of choose my own styling. And of course, I've chosen a styling that's not prevalent here in America, nor has it ever been prevalent here in America. And uh, so, so yeah, so, so I particularly like French Baroque ironwork of all kinds. So I don't care if I'm making a little hook that's French Baroque-like or if I'm just making an acanthus leaf you know, just to make an acanthus leaf. I, that I really appreciate that sort of stuff, so. Mm -hmm. What else, babe? Uh, let's see, recommendations for where to get a good blacksmith hammer. I said one was Andrew Larson, if you have any other additions to that. Um, yeah, I mean, there's tons of good makers out there on them. Old Hickory Forge, uh, John, uh, uh, John over at Old, Old Hickory Forge, he makes a good hammer. Um, Andrew Larson, again, very talented smith, makes good hammer. Um, any, any of the, uh, uh, most of all the international young smiths or whatever, they all make a really decent, make a decent hammer, especially rounding hammers if you're into those sort of things. Um, yeah, I don't know, I'm drawing, I'm, I'm coming up on a blank on that. I know there's a bunch of others. Mm -hmm. There's a bunch of others out there make them. If, if you're trying to just buy a custom made hammer, uh, you know, look around at people's stylings and the materials that they use and how long have they been doing it for. And generally, if they've been doing it any length of time, you'll see a nice, smooth, clean looking hammer. Um, and you know, you'll see them put pretty active and putting a lot of effort into their tool making. Um, yeah, Brent Bailey. Yeah, Brent Bailey. Bailey. Yep, there you go. Yeah. I knew I was Mm -hmm. I knew I was forgetting one and what the one to forget too. You know, Brent, Brent Bailey, again, makes amazingly clean uh, hammers mm -hmm. and uh, really well done. So, mm -hmm. yep. Just so you're aware, we're at 7.06 p.m. All right. It's been a while, hasn't it? Mm-hmm. All right. Mm -hmm. 
think of how to correct this now. Should we set it on its base like that and then hit on top? Well, like that, that, that really won't put out the right result, I don't think, but go ahead and try it there. Well, nah, it's not pushing it the way I want it. Grip it right here. Yeah, well, let me just work it for a moment. No bueno. I think I need to need to be able to set that up at an angle and work that down. Hmm, hmm, hmm. Pickle, pickle, pickle. I'm gonna grip it in the vise, I think, and we're gonna adjust it over in the vise. So right. let's get this hot one more time, and we're gonna lock her up in the vise. And get the whole thing hot and try to move it over. All right, questions, comments? Ethel Ironworks says, yeah, Brent Bailey is my favorite hammer. Very economically priced for a very professionally made hammer. Kit Huff says, what are your thoughts on the Abana certifications? Hmm. Good question. Um, so, uh, my thoughts, my thoughts on the Abana certification uh, process. I think it's a, I think it's ultimately going to be a good thing for the smithing community at large. Um, reason why I say that, that I think that it's going to be a good thing for the smithing community at large. And and there's an asterisk with this. There is an asterisk with this. The reason why it'll be a good thing is because. Oftentimes, when you are on perusing the internet, right? When you're perusing the internet and you get into dialogue and you're having questions, you're having commentary with another smith online and something about, something that's nuanced in blacksmithing comes up, right? Something that's more nuanced like, I don't know, the length of a hammer handle comes up, right? Or a particular, uh, particular technique or the way that somebody would go about forge welding something. That is a nuanced topic. Uh, you know, believe it or not, it, there's a lot of nuances in that and different approaches uh, to doing forge welding work. You get a lot of, I've been doing this 55 years, so I am correct. And then you get a lot of people who say, well, I've been doing it 35 years and you're incorrect. And then you have people who are saying, well, I've been doing it for five and you're both wrong, right? And you kind of get a lot of bickering and quarreling that happens in that. And having a standard by which people can say, hey, I've done a certain level of completion of study in a controlled manner can be a good thing. Now, that can also be a bad thing as well. <laughs> and so, so it's kind of a tricky subject. So it's a good thing because it can help kind of separate the wheat from the chaff, so to speak, right? Because not everybody who's been doing it 55 years has been doing it for a profession for 55 years, or they have been doing it time at the anvil every day for 55 years, right? They have dabbled in it for 55 years. Maybe they have sat on a board of some blacksmithing club for 55 years, but because they had the time to do so, but they haven't actually been smithing, actively doing works of art for 55 years. So there's a big difference there, right? So proof is in the pudding. The work kind of speaks for itself, right? So if you go through a level one and you know you do all the things that are pertaining to level one, in order to pass level one, you have to have done all the things pertaining to level one, 
right? So there's a, there's a like, hey, here's a proof of my work, right? I know at least this much about the craft or this much about the trade of blacksmithing. Then you move up to level two. You have to have done everything from level one all the way up to level two, right? And so now you're in level two and you've done everything up to that point in that place and time. And so it gives a good earmark of like, hey, this is where I'm at as a smith. And it kind of takes away a lot of the bravado of I've been doing it 100 years, so listen to me, right? Because you have to prove your work and it's something that people can look at. Oh yeah, I've, I've done this thing. And it can be that badge of uh, accomplishment, right? Uh, so, so that's one good reason for it that I think it's a good thing. The second good, second good reason is when you don't know what you don't know as you're first starting out, having somebody kind of lay out a list of steps to kind of get to where you want to be or you imagine yourself to be in this great craft can be a very helpful thing for you as a beginning smith. It kind of gives you a direction, right? You may never even complete all the certificate certificate levels or, or, or maybe you don't even maybe you don't even go and try to complete any of the certificate levels, but you use the format to self-instruct yourself or to you know get somebody to instruct you along that path to help you get where you want to be in the craft of blacksmithing. Now, that may mean you don't want to be a traditional smith, and that's perfectly fine. You may want to be a knife maker. Some of the stuff, some of the things that are in the in the level one, two, and three have nothing to do with the knife making world, right? And so, but they have their own route to travel through the ABS, right? They have their apprentice, their journeyman, and a master smith status you can obtain too, right? And they have very specific criteria, and they have a very set road map for you to do if you want to try to get those accreditations. So I can say that that, so I can say that that's where it could be a good thing is if you're really just kind of lost, you want to get into it, you're excited, but you, you don't have, um, you just don't have that blacksmith in next door as your, you know, that master smith next door as your, in your hip pocket, right? That you can draw from their knowledge all the time. That can be a very great way, of, a guided way of moving through uh, your smithing journey. So those are good things. Now where it's bad is there's always bad actors out there, there's always is, that show up in any field. I don't care whether it's underwater basket weaving, it's electrician work, it's, it's whatever, right? Pottery, you name it. There's always a few, there's always going to be some bad actors out there that will ultimately use it as a look at the feather in my cap kind of situation, right? And they will use that as a, a position to lord over or gatekeep blacksmithing. And to that, I have to say that for the, uh, for the Abana portion of it, for the doing the, um, you know, doing those grills and those certifications, it is important to keep in mind that the cat is out of the bag. The gatekeeping is not really there. It is just another form of learning. And that's how you should look at it. It's another tool in your arsenal as your tool bag. And that's what I hope Abana keeps it, keeps portraying it as. That's what I hope fully that Abana will continue that kind of approach to this platform and not get to the point of gatekeeping. People always worry about the gatekeeping situation. But where we're at now in the world of blacksmithing, the cat's out of the bag. You can learn from anybody now and the access to information has never been more rich nor more accessible than it, it at any other time in history. It has never been more than what it is right now. So, um, yeah, so, so that, that would be, <laughs> that is my thought process around the national curriculum. And, uh, you know, if you're interested in it, I would say get with the BANA and get after it. You know, get on it and, you know, go take that, take that way of uh, learning. But do keep in mind, do keep in mind, just because you're commenting to somebody and say you're a level three certificate holder someday and you come into my shop and you try to tell me everything that I'm doing wrong after I've spent a decade plus hard earned right here at old Olga there, it's not going to happen. It, it just won't. So the feather in the cap thing, the bow guarding, the, you know, the gatekeeping, of smithing uh, that will never end out that will never end 
well or play out well for you if that is your only goal is to say, hey, like, I'm a master pipe fitter. Like, that's, that won't end well. So there's my thoughts in full, <laughs> I guess. While you're talking. How, how's that going? Is that pretty? <laughs> because it could be spicy. Yeah. Tell me the spice, Jess. <laughs> Well, Black Collar and I work sent a $10 super chat and says, you're welcome, new recruits, and thank you, Roy and Jess and um, Timmy. Yeah, that was it. Thank you, Timmy. I appreciate all you guys do. Uh, Thomas Hart, bro, recruiting again soon. What's that? Recruiting again soon. Woo! Let me take one more heat to drive that back to the center. We are almost there. Yeet. All right, we're getting close, real close. Yeah, see now this is a weird little nugget to hold on to. Mm -hmm. Hopefully you guys can see how that's coming out now. Mm -hmm. Pretty cool? Yeah. Driving down here. Are you gonna try to do like a little block and everything? What's that? Hold on. What'd you say, Jess? Is it gonna look like Olga when you're done? Is that the shape you're going for? Nope. That's why it's just a single horn. Ah. No, the uh, I'll probably dr I might drive in feet. But we'll see. Mm -hmm. We'll see what we have time for. Mm -hmm. That's not too bad. Got a little more upset work to do. We'll be doing all right. <laughs> Black collar, thank you for gifting twenty more memberships. Man, Black collar, you're <laughs> awesome, sir. But you're also gonna go broke at this rate. <laughs> <laughs> Again, not complaining, not complaining. <laughs> Thank you, Black Collar Ironworks. If you guys haven't already, let's give Black Collar Ironworks a big round of applause. Right. Give Black Collar a big, huge support of clapping around there. So, Yep, we have uh, some of our new members are David Reednor, Brian uh, Hopstein, hello, hello. William Fleming, David McGow, Tim Nail. Noah B, Doyle Colony Forge, Joshua Rivas, cool. Lionheart Ironworks, Levi Reef, Mark Flynn, Forge La, Forge La Femme. Hey, Forge La Femme. <laughs> BTJ Mania, Tyler Dixon, Neil Lawson. I think I got most of them. Awesome, awesome. Well, no, I think it sound, you still have a few to go. <laughs> yeah, I think so. Yeah, some of them are still rolling in. <laughs> All right, you can slow up on that, let that heat up. All right, we ready to give some more stuff away? Yes, yes, let's I'm gonna try to keep it fairly short here. We might have to, said, I'll have to finish it, I think, mm -hmm. off camera, and mm -hmm. we'll, you know, I'll finish it up, but people get the idea. Yeah, there's a lot of material in that thing. A lot more than mm -hmm. you think, huh? Yeah, yeah, definitely. I wish I had another railroad bolt. I think that was my last one. Mm -hmm. If I had another railroad bolt, I would put one right next side it, so that way mm -hmm. you can say, that yeah. became this. Right. Oh, I really like doing those kind of transformative things. They're a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. All right. So I'm going to let Thomas explain what he's done here on these S-hooks. What we're going to do is we're going to give away uh, one set of three, yep. right? And then another set of three of these S-hooks that Thomas has made. Mm -hmm. We'll go to, where are you? <laughs> I'm going wherever you're okay. closest to. So here we go. Mm -hmm. Number two. So we're going to give away one set of three. This one has this nice reverse alternating twist pattern to it. Mm -hmm. Looks like my camp, my one light over there died. It got a lot darker. Oh, yeah, it, it did. got progressively like darker. So. Ago. <laughs> um, so we got those to give away. So there's a set of three and then a regular twisted set. 
-hmm. as well that we're going to give away a set of three. So I'm going to let Thomas speak on those a little bit. You can go to camera one, Jess. All right, and pop some sausage, ask if you want more bolts. Sure, I'll take another bowl or two. Well, guys, I uh, put up on my Instagram post and then just turned around and she put it up and you guys got a lot of great feedback from that. So she did a lot better on the voting thing. I'm not very technologically savvy. So I, I'm, I had an order for, uh, from a customer that wanted 12 S hooks, uh, about four inches long with half inch diameter and she wanted 12 different styles. So that was a challenge for me. And I put out there, I wanted you guys to vote which one was your favorite one. And, well, there was a tie. So the reverse twist and the regular twist was a tie. So I didn't want to choose which one, so I decided to make both. So um, we're going to go with reverse twist first, guys. Um, and like I mentioned, if you guys voted, Hopefully you guys could win one of this. So I greatly appreciate what you guys did there. Um, it was a big boost of confidence for myself from the community of who's looking at my work. So um, thank you guys again. We're going to ring for this um, after the whole big screen. Uh, if you guys could give me an idea of what you guys would like me to make for the next live stream. Um, and you know some ideas of what something you guys would like and uh, I'll see about getting it made. So we're first going to pull up for the reverse twist. I'm not good at rolling the hammer <laughs> but I like doing a little something different. We're going to have a little fun here. So you guys ready? Start commenting for the reverse twist. All right, we landed on Tim O'Connor, who says, S hooks, I voted, woohoo. Tim, thank you very much, bud, and I greatly appreciate it. And now we're gonna go for the nice reverse twist, uh, single twist here. So just a nice little twist. Like I said, these are four inch by half inch inner diameter. So we're gonna go again. All right, we landed on Kid KV with S Hook Me. Kid KV, thank you very much. And uh, after all this, and you guys are crazy finger typing away, uh, give me some ideas of what you guys would like made. Um, I, I'm not a professional knife maker, but if that does come up, I will make something of that that's of that shape. I'll just have to do it at my own shop because. All these are made in my shop. I'm going to hand you back over to the big man himself. <laughs> Emphasis on big outweigh Thomas by like 100 pounds. So <laughs> it's sad. It's very sad. <laughs> I do like my burritos, though. Neil Lawson says, nice hooks, Thomas. Thank you very much. All right. So uh, with that, I want to go ahead and mention, so this isn't for the giveaway tonight, but I want to take a show something off that Robert Lawness sent to us. Uh, for those of you who don't know who he is, Robert Lawness is Treadle Shed online here on YouTube and across the net, across the globe, that whole sort of thing. So we can just stay at the main cam, Jess. Okay. So he sent us a really nice care package, um, super thankful for. But in the care package, he sent us a nice little card, and we also were able to get some of these soapstone holders on these strings, which mm -hmm. is very cool, very handy to take and have. Um, so uh, looking forward to that. Thank you, Robert, for those. So Thomas gets one. Ooh, yay! Thank you, Robert. And I get two. Uh, I think one's for me too. Oh, one's, on for <laughs> one's for Jessica. One's for Jess. Okay, fine, fine. I'll share. So. There's another one, and there's another one. So there you go, Jess. There's yours. Oh, thank so you. thank you, Robert, for that. Mm -hmm. uh, awesome little care package there. You could probably find some place to clip it on myself. This bib here. Boom. 
<laughs> draw, draw. Cool. So, so he sent us that. He also sent uh, um, some nice stickers for us as well. Mm -hmm. uh, so, some nice stickers uh, for the treadle shed. Um, oh, pretty cool. Super happy about that. So thank you for that. But one of the main things that's really cool, and this is going to be part of, you know, hold on to that, please. What's going to be part of the next giveaway live stream. Now, I want to do this for the next giveaway live stream versus this live stream. You can take that. Because I can have better result. You know, everybody knows what's coming up. And I can give more shout outs to Robert for, you know, his fine craftsmanship of helping us out for the live stream. So I want to be able to do that and honor Robert in that way. Mm -hmm. So what this is, we can go to the down to the anvil cam, Jess. All right. So what this is, is this is a hook bending jig. So this would clamp in your vise, like so. You would put this in on one jaw, put this in the other jaw, and you would clamp it together in, in the vise, and then you can adjust this to fit whatever size stock you need. And also, you can take off these rushing, Russian nesting doll worth type rings to get the exact diameter of inside hook that you want. And again, you can adjust that to fit whatever stock size you have, which is a very cool way of making a hook bending jig. So he sent that to us and was very kind to take and send that to us. And it's very well made. And uh, I'm super excited about that. Not only does it have this like straight pipe portion here, but it also has this little bit that has a socket on it. And this is a half inch drive uh, socket. So you can put any type of half inch drive socket, diameter socket on there and use that with this or the other one as well. So you can put whatever size socket you want on there and to be able to have the adjustability to have a nice big, you know, hook bending jig, um, you know, fixture. So that is really cool. Thank you, Robert, for sending this to us. So that will be part of next month's live stream. Next month's giveaway live, we will be doing that. We'll be giving that away as one of the giveaway items during that stream. So again, thank you, Trial Shed. Greatly appreciate it, brother. That is excellent and awesome. So thankful. And if any of you guys ever see anything that uh, you like when we're doing these giveaways, I do put links to all the different makers down in the description below, so check that out. Uh, I know I've got Thomas down there and I've got um, Possum Sausage and uh, Dana who does our stickers, things like that. So again, check out the description if you're looking for more information. Q. 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 <laughs> Trying it out. Trying to figure it out the way I like it the best. Mm-hmm. Q. <laughs> all right, what else, hon? Uh, let's see, for Thomas, I copied down these um, people had suggested for the next giveaway. Uh, Paul Ace has maybe coat or clothes hooks. Those are always needed. Joss Majors has maybe some Damascus. Tim uh -huh. O'Connor says some shop hooks. Brenning Hammer Forge says uh, spinning tops. Michael Wright says <laughs> shelf brackets. Kid KB says coat hooks for on a wall. So there, there you go. A few, a few well, ideas we're going to go with you. coat hooks, guys. Uh, I'll be <laughs> making three of those. Uh, I don't know why sometimes three just pops in my head. And so I don't know if you guys noticed, uh, it's usually three D's wax, three coat hooks. Three just sounds like a good number to me. So yeah. uh, I just enjoy that. It's number. always one of those you got two left. <laughs> yeah. You, you use one, you still got two. So yeah, so here in about uh, an hour and a half, we will have the uh, additional live stream for members and make sure you go and yep. check out under the members tab for the link to that. Uh, that'll be in here in an hour and a half, hour yep. and a half, which is um, 9 p.m. Eastern time. Yep, so we're gonna do our final cleanup of this and then give away that treadle hammer. What do you think? Mm -hmm. Sounds good. We still have the treadle hammer to give away. We have uh, flat jaw tongs that Keith Bear will be doing and some stickers. Okay, okay, so we'll have to do that. So let's go ahead and get that hot, a little bit hotter. Good to go. And I can say Keith makes an awesome set of tongs. Uh, I've had him make me a pair and I love them. So that I can say he makes a really nice set of tongs. What else, beautiful? 
let's see, uh, <laughs> Josh Major, he says, maybe the hooks could be made out of Damascus. <laughs> Combine. <laughs> Damascus hooks there, Thomas. <laughs> See what you've done? Uh, I don't think Damascus is in my realm yet until I get the fly press. <laughs> don't go crying to me now. You've oh, set, I'll, you've I'll set I'll yourself just, up, buddy. I'll just talk to the, the favorite guy right here that loves making the Damascus. Get off of there. <laughs> Randy Shackelford says, love that jig. That very nice, the very jig. nice yep. jig. Yep. Yep. I was about to say, I didn't cut a jig just now. What, <laughs> a new jig. what is this right, guy talking jig. about? <laughs> All right. To the anvil, Jess. All right. Okay. No Mongo smash on it. around okay big whales right there Good. Good. Mostly squared up there. Hold up. Hold up. I have to grip it a little different. Mm. Go here and here. Okay. Got that centered up. Require just a little bit of cleanup work with the grinder. One more heat on that to dress that out, and I think that's pretty good. We're going to end up putting our touch marks in the bottom, I think. We'll put our touch marks in the bottom when we do it, but we won't do that right now. We'll have a little bit more cleanup work, longer than what I want to do in the stream right now, so be a little bit of fussing about, but we'll take care of that next week. Looking pretty good? It does, yeah. People like it? Mm -hmm. People excited about it? They better be. It's taken me forever. <laughs> they better be excited or else. Their fine china is rattling off their walls from how hard I'm hitting. Yeah. <laughs> uh, let's see. Thomas, comment for you. Transcendental Artist Studios uh, says, Thomas, I'll be home next weekend to get that project for you knocked out. Left my touch mark at home last month. Awesome. Sully, thank you very much. Uh, and I'm actually working on yours as well. And, and like I said, if you guys want to send me anything, uh, get a hold of me in my DMs there. On Instagram, Facebook, anything like that. So if you guys, you know, I'm trying to grow my little appearance out there. And yeah. I can only do it through you guys. So go give him a follow. It's lonesome over there. <laughs> My whole like, Oh, so I, lonesome. <laughs> I think I only got like 300. Only maybe. 300? Maybe. I don't even know what I am. You balling out of control, son. <laughs> balling out of control. Leland Hawk also says, Thomas, the tongs you made, I won them and I, they get used a lot. Thank you. Metal Man Production says, Roy, is there going to be a hardy hole? Is there gonna be a what? Hardy hole in the anvil. In that? Mm -hmm. I don't know. I might drill one. Might go for it. Gotta watch that so we don't burn it up, dude. Yeah. Yeah, let me have it. Black collar. Five new recruits, man. Man. <laughs> Way to go, black collar. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much.
Okay, I'll take her in from here. What I hope I've demonstrated in tonight's stream is you can do a lot with just your forging. Just having a little bit of having a little bit of knowledge and skill and know-how can go a really, really long way in this craft. So knowing your fundamentals, knowing how to push material where you need it and where you want it is huge. And once you learn how to do that, nothing is withheld from you in this craft. It's, it's really not. It's one of the most enjoyable and fun things about this craft is that you can start with something like a railroad bolt and turn it into an anvil. What other craft can you do that with, you know? Everything else, you got to grind something away. You got to weld something on. But in blacksmithing, you can take a shape and compress it and stretch it and contort it and bend it and move it and blossom it out into something that no one would have ever thought it could be. Um, just with your own mind and your own muscle um, and just, you know, manipulating the material where you would like it to go. It's such a cool and fun part of the process. So I hope I've taught that enough in this uh, demonstration this evening. And I've inspired you to go out and do something similar. So make your own. If you got railroad bolts at home, go for it. I'd love to see them. Tag me on Instagram and Facebook. I'd love to see your attempts. Go ahead and go right there, buddy. We'll go ahead and go right there. Take the bend out of that. Okay. Then we gotta take this and hammer right here. Okay. And then go ahead right here. Good. Nice and square. Pretty darn right to me. Last part. We're going to dress that little side up a little bit. Um, doo -doo -doo. This gets so tricky now because of the swell. Noise. Just a little bit. Keep some about right there. Not too far. Good. Far enough. What do you think, Jess? I like it. That's good? Yeah. I lie. Consonant perfectionist. Good. Nice little planishing heat to finish her off. Mm -hmm. I might drill and drift a little hole in there or file it. Take a little needle file and file a little square hole, a little hardy hole at it, mm -hmm. just for fun. What do mm -hmm. they think? That looks nice. What do they think? I'm asking, what do they okay. think? What do I, they think? All right. <laughs> yeah. What do they think? <laughs> Bortikov says it's always the year of the hardy hole. <laughs> You're the hardy hole. What can you fit in the hardy hole? Black Hammer Artisan says, awesome. You want to cool off some of these tongs for me, bro? Manga 12 says, I think it looks good. Neil Lawson says, that's awesome. It's a fun little project. Keith Tenzing, it looks great. It's got a wee lean to it. We might adjust that a little bit. Got a wee lean to one side. Might play with that a little bit, bring her back square. Again, that's just finicky, fussy bits that you could play with forever. 
Um, but it's not really a good subject matter for the <laughs> for the YouTube. I think it came out pretty swell. What do you think? Yeah, yeah, it does. Yeah, if I were to manufacture an anvil, it would be something very similar in that styling. Something with just a really nice wedge shape to it that I forged with horns drawn out on it. It would be killer. Mm -hmm. I think that's so good. I think we should do it. I think we should do it. Oh, It's interesting because what you can do, you would think that this would directly translate out to um, stuff you could do for a regular uh, so you would think that this would translate out to something that you could probably do the same techniques and steps in something like a large piece of steel. But if you were to try to undertake this process in a much larger piece of steel, you're going to have to do things to aid in the upsetting and swelling process because there is a limit. There's an upper limit to how hard and how fast you can swing a hammer as a human being. Again, everyone's built a little bit different. Sometimes you get guys that are built a little bit bigger, you know, or got, that can really lay into it, but there's a limit, a physical limit that humans can do to be able to upset material. And so you have to take a little different approach. You have to take and use a lot more like fuller material. Um, you have to be able to fuller material to one side or the other. Uh, the largest anvil I have personally forged from a large cross section of material was about 20 pounds. And that was a lot of work. So it was fine at first when the stock was more reasonable, but then as that stock got squatted out and got bigger and bigger, man, if we were at the upper limit of being able to swing hammers at it and stuff. So, um, so just keep that in mind when you're forging, you know, when you're forging stuff like this, the fatter that thing gets as it gets compressed, you're working on a thicker and thicker cross section. It's not a thinner and thinner cross section like we normally do when we're drawing something out from something thick to forging thin. Um, so, uh, but it's a fun challenge. It's a fun challenge. And maybe we'll do one, um, like I said, the 500K. Why don't you grab that piece, Thomas? So remember, we started for a railroad bolt with this one. But for 500K. Oh my. <laughs> be quite the challenge. Camera number two. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that would have been more impressive if I would have put up <laughs> there. Waited till we were at that camera, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it pales in comparison. <laughs> uh, two and a half inch round by what, six inches or so? A bit more? Six? six? Yep. I guessed it. So two and a half inch round by six inches long. It's probably like eight pounds or so. Eight, ten pounds. Probably. Yeah, roughly right it was probably there. eight pounds, feels like somewhere around there. Um, somebody could probably do the quick metal calculation, volume calculator, and figure that out. But uh, yeah, so we're going to take and turn that chunk. Go back to the main cam, Jess. Okay. We're going to turn that chunk into an anvil. And then we'll give that one away as well. And again, for something like this big, it'll be a little different process than what this is. Mm -hmm. It'll be just a little bit different. I'm going to have to use the aid of using fullers to really drive the material where I want it versus just being able to swing for the fences on it because that just won't work no more uh, when you get into this size thickness of material. Because we have to do a lot of drawing down first to get it in, squatted in this plane and then we got to do a lot of upset work and pushing them horns and them tails out where we want and driving up the feet from the bottom. So, um, But it'll be a very similar process. I just have to change up the tooling a little bit that I use in order to dry, drive that out. You could have started with a smaller bolt for this one around. <laughs> <laughs> Worked Work up, up a slowly. Bit. So, but that's at five hundred thousand. So. We got to do something mm -hmm. special for a million subs. Yeah. Yeah. Be. Share with your friends. Get them to subscribe. I'll See what Roy does for a million subs. I'll go to Patrick Novak's. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We'll go to Pat's house for a million <laughs> subs. Yeah. Uh, we'll we'll go Bradley. use that 500 pound Bradley <laughs> at a million subs. Well, I'm speaking presumably. Yeah. Because he might be like, no. Get out of here. No, I didn't like you the last time you were here. Get out of here. <laughs> cool. So, and that's a piece of what? 4140? 4140. Yep, that's a piece of 4140. So, we'll make a 4140 anvil out of that. Again, this is like a 1080. This little jeweler's anvil here. Speargrass says you'll need like a 12-hour live stream for the next one. <laughs> <laughs> I, 
I think we may have to get sponsored Maybe. by like Red Bull or Monster yeah. or Bang or something. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, oh, speaking of sponsorships, I can't say anything yet just because we haven't we haven't went uh, we haven't went fully that way yet. Um, we haven't made any decisions, but all I can say is we have arrived. <laughs> For those of you who are in the know, mm -hmm. we have arrived. <laughs> we have arrived. So apparently, once you get above, you know, a few hundred thousand subscribers, certain companies reach out. That's all I got to say. <laughs> There's going to be some people who know uh, what, what I'm talking about in the comment section. So High Desert, so, says, huh? High Desert says you should, when you get to a million subs, forge wearing a kilt. No. <laughs> no. We, we've already no. figured hey, that. If, hey, if we I, I already stated, didn't I? Yeah. I stated what it was going to be, right? It's going to be 100 k $100,000. I'll, I'll wear a kilt for a year. You know, if all the subscribers just gave you a dollar. Just a dollar. Just a dollar. <laughs> just a dollar a day you could support this wee Chad on the internet. <laughs> and, at that, and at that point, I would wear a loincloth. Oh God, no! You just you undersold it. At, at, yeah, at back a, back it up. At 20%. a million, if we get a million subs, back it up. To, nobody wants to see your loin cloth. Back it up. 20%. You have to pay me a We're dollar. We're like an old married couple. You have to <laughs> pay me a dollar not to see it. <laughs> have to pay him a dollar. He's gonna, just going to start wearing a loin cloth and tell people pay dollars <laughs> for him to not wear a loin cloth anymore. That's what that'll be. <laughs> so I'll set that off the side. Um, actually, let's let that cool uh, on the forge there. Heat that up and let it cool naturally on the forge. Yeah, I tried the loincloth thing before, but I lost a whole bunch of subs. <laughs> I just threatened it, and people were like, peace, <laughs> I'm out of here, buddy. There's like, no way that's happening. Yeah, we're doing all right. So I have 106 viewers. 106 viewers. All right, mm -hmm. cool. They must be here for the treadle hammer, eh? They must be. But before we do the treadle hammer, what should we give away? We should give away possum sausages, tongs that he wants to give us yeah. this month. Yep. Uh, as the, this month's giveaway. Mm -hmm. So let's do that real quick. Mm -hmm. So thank you, Keith Barrett, possum sausage, for contributing to this month's live stream as well. Um, so you ready? Uh huh. So. That, so we're going to give away a pair of flat jaw tongs that will be coming straight from Possum Sausage Forge. He's been uh, making one new item a month to take and give away um, as a commitment to the channel this, this year to take and help us out with the live streams, and we do greatly appreciate that, and we thank you very much. So you will still get with us through the contact email in the description, and we will pass on your information to Possum Sausage uh, so he can send you, mm -hmm. you know. Flat jaw tongs. Yeah, flat jaw tongs. Okay. All right, are we ready? Yes, we so are. We're going to pick one random person in the comment section. All right. In three, two, one. <laughs> Who do we have, Jess? We have Manga12 with Tong. Manga12, here we go. Congratulations. Congratulations. Manga12, get with us through the contact email in the description. We will get possum sausage to send you some tongs <laughs> and maybe some sausage. <laughs> but we don't possum? know from a possum. <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> oh. <laughs> Thank you, possum sausage, for supporting the channel, brother. Greatly appreciate it. All right. We're going to go ahead and give away like three or four mm -hmm. stickers. Uh, so, yeah, three or four stickers. Sure. Okay. Add that in there. It has to stop jumping enough so they can see it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, get ready to give away some stickers. All right, we're going to give away some stickers here real quick, like. Mm -hmm. Just want to see how our audio is doing. Okay, we're doing all right. Mm -hmm. So, we haven't fully ate up our audio equipment just yet. No, no. <laughs> the batteries has lasted, so. What time are we at, Jess? We are at 7.51. 7.51, good Lord. Okay. <laughs> we'll have to eat during the member stream. Oh, we're late. Yeah, we might have to eat during the member stream. Mm -hmm. Roy's, Roy's jaw is going to need to take a break. We're going to need to oh, take yeah. some more pills first mm -hmm. before for the stream. <laughs> yeah. Oh, all right. So we're going to go ahead and draw for the first uh, person mm -hmm. that we come sticker? across for yep. the very first sticker pack. Mm -hmm. So Jessica, do you got that graphic up there or no? I, Did you show off the graphic? In a moment though. Did you show off the graphic? 
Is there it graphic? The graphic content. The graphic content. <laughs> it is now on the screen. <laughs> All right. All right. So we're going to give away for one of our illustrious and highly coveted sticker packs from Dana Maggiore. Um, we are going to give one of those away now. And let's go. Pick one random person. Right. Who do we have, huh? We have Robert Lonitz with Sticker Me. Robert Lonitz, congratulations. You are the fine winner of a sticker pack from us. Thank you, good sir. Mm -hmm. What comes around goes around, huh? Yeah. Yep. <laughs> All right, we're going to draw for winner number two of the sticker pack. Okay. Three, two, one. <laughs> Who do we have? We have Wayne Mori with Sticker Pack. Wayne Mori, congratulations, you're the winner of the sticker pack number two. And thank you, Dana, very much for always supporting our channel with the stickers. Um, it's great fun. It's a great way of being able to give, give back to the community. We greatly appreciate you. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. All right, we ready? Yep. Let's draw for number three. Who do we have? David Reednor with stickers. Reednor or Redner? Maybe. Redner. David <laughs> Redner or Reednor, as Tosca would pronounce it. <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations. Get with us through the contact email in the description, and we will send you out some stickers. Fine, I sir. do my best. All right. We ready? Yeah. Let's draw one more, right? Eh? Okay. In three, two, one. <laughs> Who do we have, babe? Robert Whitney. Robert Whitney. Congratulations, <laughs> good sir. You are the winner of the last and final sticker pack for this month's live stream. Mm -hmm. Oh, congratulations. Congratulations to all the winners of those. We'll give everybody a chance to calm down and then we're gonna give away this treadle hammer kit. Okay. Boom. This one's a special treadle hammer kit. This came all the way from John Switzer's place. So John Switzer uh, agreed a while ago. I sent him uh, one of my treadle hammer kits to check out in his shop and he did and he put out a series of videos. I suggest you go check out and watch those. Uh, I highly suggest John at Black Bear Forge's channel. You should go check him out. If you're not subscribed to him already, what is wrong with you? Um, <laughs> wonderful content. So uh, yeah, so I was fortunate enough, he agreed that he'd take, and take a look at this treadle hammer kit that I had designed. And uh, yeah, so send it over to him. And so this was in the man, the myth, the legends blacksmith shop and it could be in your blacksmith shop so it gives a little bit of extra speciality now john said he would have loved to keep it but he had no place for it so he had all the other place you know basically every corner of john's shop if you've seen john's shop is completely filled with to the brim so he's got a lot of blacksmithing tools already and he's already got several forms of power hammers and treadle hammers things like that so he sent it back to me so i could give it away to you so mm -hmm. there you go so it's made it all the way out to Beulah, Colorado, mm -hmm. and back to northern Michigan. So That's right. Yep. We should have had him touch market or something. You yeah, know? yeah. I've Thomas had said it. that. We should have had him touch <laughs> mm -hmm. market or engrave it or something, you know, yeah. with his name or something on there. Mm -hmm. But, uh, yeah, so, again, John can attest to it. See, I wrote it. John, <laughs> and I probably messed up his last name <laughs> when I No, I think you're good. It. Did I? Squit, yeah. sir? Yep. Yes. Yeah. Spelled it correctly. Boom. See, I wrote his name on it and everything for <laughs> you. So... It's extra special, this treadle hammer kit is. So this is just one portion of the kit. There is a whole bag of uh, various bolts and things that go with this to be able to uh, rig this up. And then it is always backwards compatible. You can always upgrade it to the air assist later. When I have the heavy hammer upgrade, you'll be able to upgrade to that and so on and so forth later on. If you choose to do so and want to purchase those upgrades over our website, you could do so, and it will be compatible. So, and what's that website, really? That is www.blacksmithingblanks.com. There you go. There you go. See, this is the proper way of shilling stuff. Okay, <laughs> your own product, everything. Proper way of shilling. <laughs> Gotta have a Thomas. <laughs> have a Thomas. <laughs> There's none like me. They broke the mold because you can only fit so much awesome in one place <laughs> yeah <laughs> they're like "Ooh, that went that went south quick get rid of that we're good milk was a bad choice o only made one of those <laughs> 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 they said full stop 
end production mm -hmm. on that model. <laughs> All right, are we ready? Yes, we are. So, all right, so we are going to give away this treadle hammer kit from John Switzer Shop, mm -hmm. um, made by us here at Christ Center Ironworks. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, and this one is uh, for a U.S. winner, 18 or older. Yep, U.S. winner, 18 or older. We ready? Yep. Three, two, one, go. Who do we have, hun? We have Tim O'Connor with Treadle Hammer Makes Work Easier for Old Guys Too. Hey, hey, Tim O'Connor, right? Uh-huh. Congratulations, Tim O'Connor. You've got a Treadle Hammer kit there, sir, heading your direction. You know what to do. Get with us through the contact email description. Do it. Do it now. And we will get this shipped out to you post haste. Probably Monday morning. Mm -hmm. Bright and early like. Bright and early. Oh. Man, what a fun stream. Thank you guys so much and gals for being here, um, for being part of the stream. Um, thank you for all the support from everybody who donated memberships to Super Chats, to sharing the stream, to just everything you all have done. Um, I'm super thankful for each and every last one of you out there. Um, yeah, I mean, I can't, I can't gush over you enough. Thank you guys very much for being here in the stream. and. Um, you know, I'm looking forward to the next one already. Uh, we've got some busy days coming up ahead, but, uh, you know, with the sunny days and, and the nice weather coming about, you know, so there's a lot of busy things, a lot of things happening in the workshop. And I hope to be able to, you know, bring everybody along for the ride for the majority of everything that we'll be doing. So any other questions, Jess, or comments? I believe we, we addressed them down? all that I had uh, set aside. So yeah. we're good. I do have a poem. Okay, so, so you'll lead us out of the poem. So, mm -hmm. Thomas, you want to say any final words? I just want to say thank you guys for everything. Um, it's a great blast getting to hang out with you guys. Um, thank you guys for the uh, idea of next month. So I will be making three coat hooks. So um, we got cool. that going on. So thank you guys. Cool. So, yeah, so uh, be sure to tune in to the next live stream. I believe Jessica... We'll have that scheduled. Uh, yes, we have to pick the date yeah, still. We'll, we'll pick a date and then mm -hmm. it'll be uh, listed and she will yep, we, uh, blast it out across the internet. Yep, YouTube, uh, Instagram, we'll, Facebook, yep. everywhere. Yep, it will be everywhere you uh, when she blasts too. that out. Uh, keep in mind, again, we will have that awesome hook jig kit in the next giveaway live stream as well that Robert Lana sent to us. Not only will we be giving that away, we'll be giving Thomas's stuff away. We'll also be giving away that little anvil we just made that will be finished and it will be part of the giveaway as well next live stream along with another treadle hammer kit so this is treadle hammer kit number four mm -hmm. so yep. it'll be treadle hammer kit number five next live stream that will be given away in the year of the treadle hammer so thank you everyone so much for joining us and with that i'm going to let jessica mm -hmm. lead us out in a poem All and right. uh, god bless each and every last one of you and we will catch you on the next one bye now all right, I figured this time I would do the, uh, the Village Blacksmith by Henry Wadsworth Longfellow. I think it's been a few months, and of course that one's classic for blacksmiths. Under a spreading chestnut tree, the village smithy stands. The smith, a mighty man is he, with large and sinewy hands. And the muscles of his brawny arms are strong as iron bands. His hair is crisp and black and long. His face is like the tan. His brow is wet with honest sweat. He earns whate'er he can and looks the whole world in the face for he owes not any man. Week in, week out, from morn till night, you can hear his bellows blow. You can hear him swing his heavy sledge with measured beat and slow, like a sexton ringing the village bell when the evening sun is low. And children coming home from school look in at the open door. They love to see the flaming forge and hear the bellows roar and catch the burning sparks that fly like chaff from the threshing floor. He goes on Sunday to the church and sits among his boys. He hears the parson pray and preach. He hears his daughter's voice singing in the village choir and it makes his heart rejoice. It sounds to him like her mother's voice singing in paradise. He needs must think of her once more, how in the grave she lies and with hard rough hands, he wipes a tear out of his eyes. Toiling, rejoicing, sorrowing, 
Onward through life he goes. Each morning sees some task begin, each evening sees its close. Something attempted, something done, he has earned a night's repose. Thanks, thanks to thee, my worthy friend, for the lesson thou hast taught. Thus at the flaming forge of life, our fortunes must be wrought. Thus on its sounding anvil shaped, each burning deed and thoughts. Thank you everyone for joining us and have a blessed weekend.